It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anaka, Renee Ritchie, and Alex Lindsay are here. We'll talk about the Spotify kerfuffle, Apple's trademark of Night Shift, and typewriters. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 514, recorded Tuesday, July 5th, 2016. Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Adobe Marketing Cloud. Introducing Adobe White Papers for marketing. White Papers read aloud to keep you up to date with the latest trends and technologies. Listen today by searching Audio White Papers for Marketing on iTunes or visit adobe.com for more information. And by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com slash MacBreak to get $5 off your first order. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Go to ring.com slash MacBreak and get $50 off one of their Ring of Security kits, the Bundle Kit or the Pro Bundle Kit with their limited time offer. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news, of which there is a dearth. But that will not stop us, my friends. No onward into the fray with Mr. Andy Anako of the Chicago Sun Times. Happy Fifth of July to all my fav all my uh, fellow Lower Canadians. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of Canadians, Renee Ritchie is here from Montreal. You celebrate on the first of July. Is that come on really an attempt to one up us? No, it's Confederation Day, Leo. It's, and we still have a we still have a queen, and who is a separate legal entity from the British Queen? Yeah. We found out. Yeah. What? Queen of Canada is a completely separate legal entity from the Queen of England. Has somebody informed her highness? She is apparently a legal entity in 18 or so different countries. She's the queen of. Wow. And speaking person. of queens, it's Alex. <laughs> no, that's wrong. <laughs> that? That's wrong. Stop right there, Leo. Alex Lindsay's here. You may have Ooh. seen him in kinky boots. He's now at the Pixel Core. <laughs> no, that's somebody else at Alex Lindsay. Hello, Alex. Hello, hello. Nice to see you from his Good to see you as well. His uh, soundproof lair somewhere in Marin County. Yes, I I uh, I was going to come up, but I um I hurt my leg and I'm having Ooh, trouble driving, ow. so I'm I'm sorry. So I uh, but I, as soon as I can drive again, then I'll be I'll be good to go. Right now I'm just Ubering to back and forth. <laughs> it is not by the way I bookery says Federation Day, it's Confederation yes. Day. Confederation Day. Federation Day will not be celebrated for a couple of centuries yet. We we know we no longer have the British North America Act. We have to wing it on this whole You're confederated thing. <laughs> you know, here in this country, confederation is not a good word. Well, in your country, liberal doesn't seem to be a good thing either, Leo. And it's the far right wing party confusing. in Quebec. So. I know, so confusing. The liberals are our right wing. I don't know. So we live in a different confusing. world. Uh, are are you planning to exit from the EU? We brexited early, Leo. We brexited <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> Quebec keeps trying to can exit, but that you want to can exit. That's right. Yeah, they had two two referendums when I was a kid, and we I they remember. lost by I think like forty nine or forty eight percent. But I was so dumb as a child, I thought that it actually meant we would break off from the country and hopefully go someplace warmer like the Flo Caribbean, float south. <laughs> I, I was really for it. I was like, yes, yes, next to Jamaica, just park us <laughs> no there. No more snow. Ah, <laughs> oh, it would be such a great platform. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd have to get a third queen. Uh, no, she's queen of Jamaica too. So we oh, just, yeah. perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. It's all yeah. it's all in the cards. I like how this is coming they're, together. They're going to have to change so much money when when Charles becomes king. My God! Oh, do they do I they uh, do they do that? Do they put the reigning monarch on? I know the queen no, is on so now. No, it's just on a couple. Like, like the queen was on the dollar bill, but we don't have a dollar bill anymore, and she's <laughs> on the coins. So I mean, we we changed Laurier. I think Laurier is on the five, and people keep turning him into Spock. So we had to have the government ask people. To stop <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah, that Laurier was good. into the spot. Yeah. yeah, we're a fun. Now, Ray, video. Is, is this part of that same same institutional cultural problem where you had two football teams called the Rough Riders in the same yes. league? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, we had seven teams, two of which were called the Rough Riders. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, space, I'm, not saying it, I'm not saying it indicates a problem. I'm saying that that indicates something unique and wonderful about the 
Canadian national character. That's all I'm saying. They were two leagues that joined. Each league had a Rough Riders, and no one. It was like Sam Steele staring at you across the border. No one was willing to flinch. I'm pleased to say that uh, a Google search for Canadian Spock money actually <laughs> <Delightful>. delivers. <laughs> it's just delightful. <laughs> <laughs> he really does have that look, doesn't he? <laughs> Please sit down to this at home. Can, can you find like the? Was there? An, I hope there was an actual press conference in which the the, the treasurer had to say, "Guy, come on, we worked hard." Hey, please on stop that putting. Portrait. Please stop turning Jeez, into Spock. Guys. Guys. Yeah. Hoser, stop turning him into Spock. The Bank of Canada feels that writing and markings on banknotes are inappropriate, as they are a symbol of our country and a source of national pride. Now they're a source of international pride. Yeah. Doesn't work right, with Alexander with Hamilton. Work, you can make almost anybody look like Spock. Nor does it work on Abe Lincoln. There you go. See? Yeah. Next, next you're going to say it's disrespectful to turn George Washington into a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Scotland, it works. Spockification. Is that an <laughs> iOS 11 feature? Spockification. Okay, and Neil deGrasse Tyson trying to get in on it as usual. He's such no, he, I th no, there, he, he sensed that people were having fun somewhere, <laughs> yes. and he instinctively had to find it and squash it. I will be there. If you say something, I'll take <laughs> Neptune away from you as well. Hey, speaking of which, congratulations. We, uh, you, If you were watching our live stream right before uh, the show, we showed the clip from the new screensavers on Saturday where we interviewed a... Uh, a space scientist who had made one of the uh, instruments, the Jade instrument on the uh, uh, Jupiter probe. It did its ins when you say the Jupiter probe's insertion was successful. That <laughs> the South Park episode, waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's exactly what happened yesterday, uh, last NASA, night. NASA actually, got, NASA got drunk in their pickup truck in the middle of a field <laughs> at midnight. Next thing and you NASA's know, top with the Jupiter. But it was a they're very getting, uh, getting telemetry, very challenging uh, thing. A launch five years ago, they. Uh, Covered millions of miles and hit hit it within 20. And uh, all the instruments apparently intact, and they'll be fired up in the next couple of days. Amazing. Yep. Pretty cool. First pictures, we think, beneath the cloud cover of Jupiter. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that interview on... Meanwhile, the but was there, wasn't there like a premature engine shutdown, like during injection, that like for about like 30 seconds, you see everybody in the room going, oh, holy mother of... <laughs> God, until like it, they got the telemetry back and it fired back up. <laughs> it's better than and a Bruce Willis the clouds movie. And you see a shopping mall. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Uh, let's see here. It, we're kind of jamming uh, because there's not a lot of news. This is that time time period in app in the life of uh, Apple where there's just really not much to say in between. All new betas today, Leo. It came out like five minutes before the show. New betas today. New betas. Today. All the new betas. Feels like that's every week. They, they were so I think it was supposed to, well not supposed to be but they usually do every two weeks and last week was two weeks so people got nervous this week and were just ah. waiting and waiting and then they finally have, unleashed the hounds. I have to admit that I I, I uh, haven't installed a beta on an iOS uh, um, tablet until this weekend. I, mean, I installed a bunch of them and uh, and it's so easy now. Like it's become like I think the last time it was like you hook it up on your computer and you had to do, move the stuff over and do all the installations and now it's just like oh I just download a little 8K registration and then just hit go. They you said know, the so. public betas would start this month for uh, yes. Watch OS 2 and iOS 10. Has uh, that is that the case? iOS 10 and Mac OS. They're not doing Watch OS. Well, they're not or doing TV Watch betas. Beta. Okay. No. Public beta. Theirs are fiddlier installs and they're not really for right. everybody yet. Uh, have they started the public betas? No, that should be soon-ish, okay. like in the next couple of weeks. Is this the time we should warn people not to do it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, my, I'm on the betas because I have to be because I write about them, and I still, like, it's not anything I'd recommend anybody put on their normal yeah. phone. Just Chris, don't do it. Josh Windish, our resident Apple fanboy, like the day of WWDC, put his watch OS 2 and iOS 10 on his phone and his watch. It's so tempting, Leo. I know. Yeah. Well, he said he was he was very pleased with Watch OS too. I don't think yeah. he's had a lot of problems with it. Right. Yeah. I had to explain my my kids both have uh, beta on on their iPads. What? And, uh, they <laughs> you were put like, iOS ten on your kids' iPads? Downs, Are you insane? So, so they they they're using the um, the only reason they have it there is because of the uh, playground. You know, Swift Playground. Oh, which. They are rocking. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> like, they're six and eight years old, and there's this competition. If one of them gets further ahead than the other one, the other one then comes over to me oh, and starts, okay, how do I do cool. this? What is a function? It's like a function is kind of like a tool <laughs> now, that you build. Well, wait a minute. Like, how old are you? These tools. Your kids are like five and three. Six and eight. <laughs> six and eight. Okay, they're a little older than they used to be. Yeah, no, it, I, um, yeah, it does so happen, uh, I hear. It is, it, it, I don't Still, that's how, awfully young to be there's, learning there's Swift. Space. They've still they been are. alive for a few years, and I've been trying to develop iOS software. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
No, no, I, wow. they, they've got a solid, they, they've got a solid command of functions now. And, That's amazing. Um, and understanding how to how to do how that works and how like save my you know my daughter was like oh that saves so much time <laughs> she's like what she's like, she was doing, she was doing all <laughs> these steps and then she's like and then she built a function and she was like oh, okay and, and then now every time she sees it she goes so how would I build a function for that <laughs> so she's, <laughs> she's like six years old. magical <gasps> yeah yeah it's wow. it's pretty pretty cool I don't think it's really designed for the age group that uh, it would it definitely is a lot more hands on which is for me I love. Uh, because it is, uh, it's kind of uh, father kid time to to hang out. So um, so we sit there and I you know explain to them what that stuff is and Daddy, how it works and we go through it. What's recursion? And... Yeah, so we're so, so it's, uh... we're so proud of our daughter. She's complaining about Apple developer guidelines on a tw on a, on a college level. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So anyway, wow. it's it's uh it, it, it's um I thought that the when I first saw the graphics for it, I thought oh that would be a little corny, but they they love it. And how about you as an adult? Do you think it's something as an adult that you would be? I mean, that's what I'm kind of interested in playing. Well, with. I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity there because um you know if you if you look at some of the stuff that they showed, anybody can build a Swift Playground book, and so the stuff that ah. is up there right now that the kids are playing with is is uh, pretty basic, but you can definitely build things that were much more complex. So one of the things that I've been playing around with is like, if I want to build a book on how to integrate uh, coding with, let's say little bits or with, you know, doing some basic back and forths, you know, you can build something that gives people basically kind of a safe place to play um, where they can, they don't have to write all the code. So you could work. write your own workbook uh, yeah. as difficult or as easy as you wish and yeah, then so offer it to people and they can install it and download it or whatever. And exactly. Those are just documents. What, yeah, they're, they're basically, it's in a whole other level of iBook kind of thing. Oh, um, that's really intriguing. So, so, so while this is great for kids right now, what they put out, uh, you can imagine that that you know you can have lots of teachers building their uh, you know building their own. I mean, I think that was one of the big successes of iBook was not iBooks was not so much that the publishers jumped on it or that that it became this revolution, but teachers used it all over the place to to um, and shared a lot of iBooks to to do their own stuff because they were able to build it. And so so having this back end where they can actually you can actually put that together, um, you can take whatever. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's made by companies that are specializing in it, and we're uh, evaluating how deeply we want to get into doing stuff around this, uh, around Swift Playground. Um, but the uh, but anybody can put those together. I mean, it's still a challenge. I mean, it's it's uh, you got to figure out how you're going to say it and what you're going to expose and so on and so forth. But you can have parts of the code that are being activated by functions that you're giving the user and, and so on and so forth. And so, so those are, uh, it's a pretty exciting platform. I think that um, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think that getting into the kind of the um, internet of things stuff with Swift could be really interesting for a lot of the manufacturers too. So you can see how I can move a Sphero around or change the colors of my lights. And I don't have to learn how to code everything from the ground up to do that. And, and the interesting thing about Swift Playground is, is that it's it's got the entire code base in there. Like all of Swift is in there. If you call, <laughs> if you call those things, it'll it, it it's got it all built in. So um, it's a it's a pretty interesting platform. So anyway, that's why the, that's why the kids and I have, and actually my wife has um, iOS uh, ten on on their on their uh, iPads. So What's the time frame? Does anybody know for Swift three? Because that's a big change. Is this going to be Swift three when it comes out? Probably right. Because that's I think fall. so. Yeah, I yeah. think it's yeah aimed for that. Yeah. yeah. Because that is a huge, I mean, that's, um, it's not source compatible. I mean, it's a big change. So, okay. Um, is not Swift 3 now or is it, Alex? Do you know? Uh, I I do not know for sure. Yeah. But I, I can't imagine they would build something that's not getting released till the fall to not be compatible with the thing that's released in the fall. It's possible. <laughs> Swift 3 is expected to be released sometime in late 2016. So they're very, you know cagey about this yeah and i and i think in the beginning if you were learning the, the what what the basics learning, are basic i think it's the basics are basics yeah, i think yeah. that uh they're, but it's it's they're a, even it's cross a language frankly i mean you know if statements and loops and yeah function yeah. and i think just that right now it's just getting you know getting around the basic uh yeah. nomenclature it's so funny how the you know the uh uh you know even my kids are getting used to the little brackets and the you know the curly brackets versus the parentheses and where they got to put them and you know and, and all of that stuff is i think that and i underestimated how important that was. I really felt like, oh, you should just make something very graphical, you know, more like Lightbot, but more. And that's why I think why my kids have 
done so well on it is because they played Lightbot for hours. Lightbot's so they, really great, yeah. So they, so to them, the, the the first levels of all this code was just more Lightbot, you know, and um, and so they they completely understand how to do that. Yeah. Um. So I really felt like it should stay graphical, but but by seeing the code, it does help a lot for them to kind of uh, understand what they're doing. So it's um it it I think it's uh. It's pretty cool. And we've mentioned it before, but the Apple has open sourced uh, Swift. There is a Linux implementation. There will be a, a kind of a more complete implementation with Swift 3, they say. be the first uh, version of Swift on Linux to complete, com contain the complete and libraries. Written in Swift. So, so you'll well, be I able to do that on, on Linux. And then IBM has really weird, speaking of Playground, Swift Playground Online. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure what IBM's intention is with Swift, but you feel like they're up to something. Well, and I, I think that the, the the interesting thing here is with an open source platform and a in a very uh, robust teaching mechanism, you could end up with you know that could be the next generation of coders. You know, I mean, it's it's a you know it's going to be hard pressed for a school to find resources that are better than the Swift Playground platform to teach coding. Yeah. You know, that's that's the issue is it's going to be very difficult to find something that's competitive to that. There's a lot of things that people have been using, um, but they're not nearly as robust as as what Swift Playground looks like so far. This is the uh, IBM uh, Swift Sandbox, which is, you know, just kind of a, like a, a REPL for uh, Swift, but it's online, which is wild. Uh, Swift uh, SwiftLang.ng.bluemix.net. But I think what's interesting is the idea that Swift may end up being more than just an Apple programming language. It's very clear Apple's all in on Swift, that all Apple development will be, uh, for mm -hmm. for all platforms, will be Swift uh, sooner than later, I think. And the people the, the people I talk to who use Swift really are high on it. And I think Federighi said parts of Finder and parts of other core uh, applications are already being rewritten partially in yeah, Swift yeah. or updated in Swift. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, all right. We got really the big story of the week, and the, almost the only story of the week is about Apple Music. So we'll we'll talk about that in just a second, <laughs> um, and uh, and then if you guys could find something else to talk about, that'd be great. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> I just you know what I don't want, and I know what we will end up doing is is doing the usual rumor mill tour, right, of the iPhones, next iPhone and the next MacBook. It's Pro. clearly dark blue, Leo. No, 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 it's black. <laughs> no, 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 royal it's blue. Just like, come on, guys. Uh, I'm really, I'm really holding my breath for a new MacBook Pro, though I have to say. And uh, you'll get one. I, I, I went. To the, I years. actually got to the point where I, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, went to the Apple Store online and checked <laughs> today. It's <laughs> so like just in case. I mean, I think there would be a, a, a fairly large noise when that happens, but I just, just in case I missed that. But no. <laughs> no. Yeah. And we'll talk about so, the uh, organ donor app, which is actually very interesting, yep. and we want to encourage everybody to do it. So uh, I'm sure that's. All three is pick for the week. Our show today brought to you by Adobe Marketing Cloud. Now, if you're uh, in business or you work in the marketing department or you're a marketing professional of a business, but, but also if you own a business, marketing is, uh, is a complex and challenging thing. I think a lot of us, and I really include myself in this, are seat-of-the-pants marketers. Well, that seems like a good idea, but there's really a lot. Uh, and especially nowadays in the internet era about marketing that is that is science. If you want to keep up to date on the latest marketing trends and technologies, you're going to love these white papers from Adobe and their audio white papers, which is really great. It makes it very easy for you to listen uh, on, the, on your way to work to kind of be, uh, you know, keeping up to speed uh, in your downtime. The series of audio podcasts includes topics like learning the difference between and I confess not to knowing what I'm talking about here. Interaction metrics, engagement metrics, and value metrics. I, I better listen to that one to help figure out what part of your creative is working. Seems like that would be important. Creative pers creating a personalized content that's relevant to customers using predictive analytics. You can tell I need to listen to this. Creating a 360-degree view of each customer, no matter where they're interacting with your brand and a lot more. And what's nice is you don't have to read these. You can, but they've made them uh, audio. In fact, they got really good readers, some of the best readers from Audible, in fact. So all you have to do is search audio white papers for marketing on iTunes. They're free, and you'll gain great insights into the latest marketing trends and maybe even be entertained. You can find out more at adobe.com or uh, search. Yeah, you got or you just, yeah, right there. Listen to these white papers. Uh, or just go to iTunes. I, I don't think that Malcolm McDowell is reading this current crop, but they have a lot of them. It's really good. 
Search iTunes, or you can even Google Adobe Audio White Papers for Marketing. It'll go right to that iTunes page. And we thank Adobe Marketing Cloud for their support. Appreciate them uh, reaching out to our Mac Break Weekly audience. I think they, uh, they think you guys are pretty valuable customers. Uh, Spotify says, Apple's holding up our app. Apple says, well, you dopes. The rules have never <laughs> changed. I don't know who's right on uh, this one. Um, Everybody's wrong, Leo. Okay. <laughs> Everybody can be wrong. Everybody can be wrong. I do know that it's true that Apple is a direct competitor to Adobe. And so it's not unreasonable for, I mean, to Spotify, to Spotify, Spotify. and Adobe. But, <laughs> but to Spotify, <laughs> they're frenemies with Adobe. I don't think you could say they're frenemies with Spotify. Uh Every every uh, new Apple Music subscriber is probably one fewer Spotify subscriber, and vice versa. Um, first of all, I, I think you know the first thing to get clear on is what is the new Spotify app doing that Apple doesn't like? It is directing people away from the App Store and towards the Spotify web presence in order to sign up uh, for subscriptions, which is counter to Apple's. I really kind of directing and it turned off the ability to sign up within yeah. the app. Well, what in the past they've done uh, is charge you an extra three bucks because, of course, Apple takes 30 percent. So if you subscribe, as I do unaccountably, because I guess I'm a doofus to Spotify through the uh, uh, Apple's Apple store, you pay an extra three bucks. Yeah, and the, their current app also does does the redirection, which it shouldn't be doing. So I mean, it's not. Well, couldn't is it? You yeah. mean they actually redirect you, or they say, you know, it would be cheaper if you went to the. Uh, they have a, a weird pop up that says, "For a premium experience, click here," and then it clicks you through uh, to the website. Okay. But the current one was approved. Yeah, so I mean, like, th there's been there, there's been several tiers of this for a while. Like, it's been long rumored that Netflix, for example, has had the fifteen percent rather than thirty percent levy for several years, and that other really big oh. subscription based oh. companies have had uh, deals that were oh. that were lower than thirty percent. And that's coming to everyone. Some people are getting it now. Some people will be getting it in the fall. But subscriptions for everybody on the second year of recursion will be getting the fifteen percent. So that that's going to be going across the board. But some companies, we live in a world now where it's middlemen. You can't have multiple middlemen because everybody is trying to take 15 to 30 percent of the same pie so if you own the music and you sell it directly you, you don't lose any money but if you sell it to amazon or then wants to sell it to apple or then wants to sell it to you suddenly you have two middle companies and they both want 30 percent and that 30 percent just doesn't exist for them so that's when you get into these these contentions about yeah. and this only applies to digital goods physical goods there's no charge on some people were confused about how amazon retail apps for example were. bruce sewell apple's general counsel writes we find to spotify and publicly we find it troubling that you are asking for exemptions to the rules we apply to all developers and are publicly resorting to rumors and half truths about our service yeah what is the it's, it's, what is the rumor and half truth that uh, spotify's uh, spotify was making the case that the, the, there's they've been trying to play that uh because spotify is a competing service they're being their their app is being withheld or being treated as a second tier uh priority for the app store uh when really as legitimate as any concerns were that apple would use an app store to uh, exert control over the market they've never it's never been proven that they've actually done that so I, I do know when i when i uh, am using audible or Amazon uh, Kindle on uh, on iOS that I can't buy books in those apps. Yeah, I'm sent is, to the or, web or, com or, or Comixology, and that's see that's there's there's a whole there's there are whole di dimensions this, to this discussion. It's kind it's haven't you ever had an interaction with a cellular phone a cellular company or a cable company where they're charging you for uh, the service to it or a service fee for having tickets emailed to you but there's also a service fee for having tickets printed and there's also a service fee for picking up tickets elsewhere or I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a forty dollar service fee for uh, switching your sim for a new one that you need to get the service that you're paying for there comes a time when you say you are charging me because you feel as though you can you're not giving me anything in return for this enormous amount of money in the, in the case of the the cut that the apple is taking from a lot of these uh, a lot of these online sales it's i think there's just going to be even greater pushback uh, when it's uh, when you have situations like uh, again I, I make my purchases through comiXology every wednesday for my new comics and i have to leave the app in order to do that 
because there is just not an extra 30% in, uh, in Comixology's uh, profit margin to give to Apple for the purpose of doing a simple credit card uh, transaction, which pretty much they could get a much better deal on anywhere else. So why doesn't uh, Spotify just do that? Say, if you want to subscribe to Spotify, you can't do it in the app. You have to go to the web, just as the Kindle app does in the Comixology. Why don't, it, would that be okay? Well, remember that the Comixology app doesn't send you anywhere else. Uh, it, all, it, all it can do is, if you want to do something within the app, is it will let you. <clears throat> excuse me. It will show you the catalog, and you can push a button to add it to the, your wish list or, or your pull list, and then go to Comics manually on your own. Go to Comixology.com and then see, oh, hey, there's my wish list all populated with these eight uh, comics that I've, uh, that I've chosen, and then make the purchase. Um, Spotify, I think that's a, it's a. They're trying to skirt around the rules of uh, of, of the de developer rules that Apple set up, but also they're trying to make things, oddly enough, easier for the user rather than just be silent as now. I hope you're going to figure out that we also have a website and you can also buy things off of our website. They're trying to figure out a way. They're, they're, they're kind of testing the electric fence to look for weak <laughs> spots that if we put a link here that people can tap and we word it in such a way that it doesn't look like we're directing people away from the app to make a purchase – is that going to, can we sneak that through? And Apple has said, no, we're not going to sneak that through. You're trying, we, we want our fifth, we want our 15 pennies off of every dollar. We want our 30 pennies off of every yeah. dollar. And uh, a great number of Spotify customers do subscribe through iTunes. So yeah. this is but not something that Spotify can walk away from either. It's, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, for, uh, for instance, uh, I think you can make the, you can make the argument that, uh, Apple gets a bigger benefit from Netflix operation in, uh, in on iPads and on the Apple TV than Netflix gets from the bringing Apple right. customers to the service. And so the idea that Apple is taking even one penny from that transaction above what it costs to simply process a credit card is absurd. And I think that for a great many other services, you can make exactly the same uh, sort of argument. There's so many places where I, uh, if you are, a, there, there's so many places where if you're a small developer and you don't have the resources to do your own uh, marketing transactions yourself, there, I know a lot of developers who do think that 30% is, they wish it were less, of course, but that's a, that's a headache that's off of their hands and they're actually kind of willing to spend 30 cents off of every dollar to not have to do, just get a, just get an amount of money every month uh, for, uh, for their purchases. But so many of these other businesses, you just have to ask, wow, is that, how is Apple delivering 30 cents per dollar of service to Comixology? And I think that that's something that Nobody has a really the, good answer I think for the it. Argument, I think the argument is, is that it's kind of like saying, why should Macy's pay for space in the mall? You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, Yeah, it but is. I mean, a credit card company, uh, Visa takes, what, 5% of the transaction? Probably less. So it's a, so I can see, but I mean, you, and Spotify is already paying that. Here's what, then, uh, by the way, according to Jonathan Prince, who is the uh, Spotify communications director, he said, this is the... The thing that bothers Apple. Premium feature. You discovered a premium feature. You must have a yeah. premium subscription to unlock it. Got it. Now, does that got it take you to Spotify on the web? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he it's, says it's, no offer, no purchase, no link to anywhere at all. I don't know. I yeah. Unfortunately, well, so I can't it, tell because I don't have it on my... There's uh, so much to unpack here. Forward, right? um, and, and one of the things that's super interesting is like you can look and say, well, you know, Google was a tremendous benefit to Apple because people could access it and search the web. But Google was paying billions of dollars for access to Apple's customer base. And there's a feeling that access, because the tradition, traditionally the iOS customer base has been the uh, sort of a premium base who are willing to pay a lot of things for services, that that was valuable. Uh, Apple has given free apps, free access to App Store infrastructure for years, and that's partially subsidized by paid apps uh, paying their fair share. And there was maybe a pessimistic belief that if you made subscriptions and in-app purchases uh, free from iTunes, that almost every app would just move to uh, subscriptions or in-app purchases that were outside the iTunes ecosystem, thereby you know ra radically reducing the amount of income that's coming into the App Store and making it run at a loss, which is something that Apple is just religiously unwilling um, to do. And also when you look at things like 
like, you know, like comicology or you look at things like TV stations, the rights and monies that pass back and forth is much is really complicated. And 15 percent in some ways is incredibly cheap and 30 percent in some ways for some developers, especially early on. I mean, now they're starting to resent it. But in the early days, you look at blog posts by like Craig Hockenberry and it's like only 30 percent. This is ridiculously great. I can't believe Apple is doing this. So depending on who you are, what your exact market is and what business you're in, 15 percent could be incredibly cheap. And again, if you are if you own the platform, it's like Apple in Apple retail beats headphones are essentially free, but other companies have to give Apple a wholesale discount, which is not 15 percent, but 55 percent. And that's just how retail works. And you can't set up a boutique inside retail because then you're giving 55 percent of 55 percent. We've just come to a point in time when platforms uh, are the gateway to all these services and there's going to be a shaking out. And the last sort of thing I'll point out is that Spotify is in a horrible business. We've talked about this on the show before. There is almost no money to be made in streaming music. And it's going to be the companies like Apple and Google and Amazon that have ancillary businesses that they can use the streaming music service to add value that are going to really want to do them because, you know, for them, if it's if it's break even, it doesn't matter. For Spotify, it's literally life and death. And I think that's why they're they're fighting so hard. But I don't I don't think the business is going to exist for them either way. Yeah, and I think that I mean, obviously, the, they have a competitive issue. I mean, they, they cannot continue to compete with uh, with music. I mean, they, they can they do okay right now. They got ahead at the beginning, but they're not going to be able to continue to uh, stay ahead as new users make decisions and as people start to look at it. I mean, you know, you know, the, the and I think the big competitive advantage again for music is just simply that I hold down my, you know, hold down my my little thing on my headphone and say what I want to hear and I hear it, you know, and that that tie in I think is probably more compelling than anything else that music has uh, to offer. But it'll be enough for, you know, the kind of a constant erosion for them. Um, the price point, of course, becomes another issue. So trying to find some way around that that point where they because they, they have no room to provide give back, um, you know, but I think that I, I think that it is. So, I, I mean, I, I get that where they're coming from there, but I, I do think that. Um, you know, I think saying that Apple shouldn't have to pay anything for or shouldn't have to charge, you know, anything for their platform. I mean, they are providing a platform and, and access to a group of people who consistently spend more money than anyone else anywhere else. Um, you know, that that, you know, I, I think that saying that Apple shouldn't be allowed to uh, take advantage of that or, or get some uh, residual from that. Um, you know, if, if, you know, I think it gets into if you don't like it, then don't don't put it on there. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I, don't, I, I guess I, I just don't understand. Like, if, if I don't, if you don't like the percentage, then you know, if you don't want to follow the rules, like, I, you know, I, I get that they need to because they can't survive without that platform. But, uh, but it seems like you know, it's it's uh, Apple built the house and can charge the rent that they. I charge. believe Apple no. pays for Beats on Android. Like, I believe Apple pays a percentage to Google Play for for uh, Apple Music on Android. Mm -hmm. Sorry, say that again. Apple I pays. Apple pays. Oh. Yeah. If you subscribe to Apple Music through the Android store. You will obviously uh, Google will take its cut. Do we? We don't know what the cut is. I think it's similar. I don't think it's, there's a great variance across the industry. And of course, like the big competitor, all these guys is YouTube because it's almost unlimited free music. Uh, sometimes of dubious licensing. Origins. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's hard because it's a bad business. But I, I hate. I want to see the competition uh, at the same time. And it also seems like oh. a little backhand and slap at Apple customers because, or iPhone users because. I mean, in the just the course of events, you just would ha you wouldn't say anything. You would just have this service, and you'd say, you know, a premium is available elsewhere, or whatever. I don't know how you would do it, and I'm sure there's a way to do it within Apple's. But I think that they just figure, oh, you're an iPhone user. The only way you're going to be able to figure this out is if you do it through the app. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, it's it's a it's a terribly bad model for customers, and the assumption is that you you had a pre-existing subscription and you've just gone to download their client on iOS. Right. Therefore, it's not necessary to send you to the store. Uh, and if you if you are not a customer, then you discovered it through the iOS app, and that's what triggers Apple to believe that they deserve a cut. And again, terrible terrible for customers, uh, and not a very optimistic model. But it's right. it's difficult to Apple is it's one of those things where Apple's going to have to be hurt and hurt badly in the market for them to want to, for right now, they believe the relationship goes in the direction of Apple. You know, they have this wonderful product, super successful. The app store is successful beyond belief. Uh, when you start to become like Microsoft or BlackBerry, then you start to become really incredibly friendly to developers and services because you really, really need them. But, you know, and, and Google can be friendly at some times and then just clone your business on other occasions. When you're, when you're a successful business, it's, it's really hard for people who don't have a lot of money to throw around. Well, there's a third party in this that we're kind of leaving out, which is the music industry. And I think the music industry has an this is going to be an interesting part of the equation i mean don't on the one hand they have a definite interest 
in having competition to Apple uh, iTunes and Apple Music, right? You want to have uh, a vigorous ecosystem. Otherwise, Apple is too powerful. Especially if Apple buys Tidal as one less. Right. Uh, on the other hand, Apple, uh, and part of the reason they probably are interested in Tidal, has, has because of Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre and, uh, and Taylor Swift, has great relationships with the music industry, and particularly with artists, right? Artists love, I think it's safe to say, artists love Apple. They're and, not very happy with Spotify due to the amount of money that they right. get for some. Well, I think so, they're not happy with anybody providing a free ac free access to their music. I, I think that that is, and that's most likely something that will most, I think, will probably largely fade away. So, you know, but the music industry see. will have something to say about this. What do you think? The, I guess, actually, it's the music industry would like this to continue. Artists <laughs> would, would, would uh, like it, loves Apple and said, that's fine. We'll just go through Apple. Right? Is that fair? And And... Where, what is the music industry going to do about this? Because they they want to keep Spotify alive, and yet the same. I mean, they are artificially they doing I, I, no, it. I don't think that they do want to keep. Spotify. They don't want to keep a Spotify. No, I think that they they want some competition there. But I think that one of the things that they I think they like is that you know Title provides an opportunity to to get a higher margin if they continue to use that business model, uh, especially if Apple bought them and and decided to continue to use that business model. There's a higher margin there available for the so artists. Spotify's just screwed basically, no matter what mm -hmm. happens. Yeah, they're. I, I don't. I think you know. I give them. Uh, Three to five years. Does not that out. make you sad? It was slack really? in the market. And a lot of businesses exist in the slack in the market. And when that slack goes away, it's just very hard for that business to continue. There's no slack for Spotify. No, I mean, like it, it gets pulled tight, Leo. And then, yeah. again, like you, you can have, it happened in smartphones. Companies, Microsoft can keep Windows Phone going as long as it wants because it has so much money from other sources. Palm and BlackBerry, not so much. They didn't have ancillary income to keep yeah. them going. That makes well, it very hard. I think that Spotify had it had a time when they needed to be creative. They needed to figure out a way to really develop a brand that people were really attached to, find ways to do more with the artists, which they're attempting to now. But I think that's a little too late. A little too late. I think as a there there could have been ways to be creative about that. And I think that I don't think that they may they may not go away. They may get bought. They may be, you know so on and so forth. But I don't think that they will exist as a as an independent entity. Um, you know, Microsoft, for instance, did really well and then failed at this area so you know they, they could be another you know opportunity is uh, this is an a, in a, then a last ditch attempt for spotify to uh gain the attention of the federal T trade commission and hope, elizabeth warren yeah and and hope that they can because basically they're shooting the moon at this point they got nothing to lose is that your is that how you feel is that in other words, mm. let's just let's just uh, see if we can get anybody to believe the fact that this Michael is Michael Gartenberg had a really good take last week where he said that when you when a company turns to the courts, it's usually they're yeah. usually not on the on the way up. It's their last ditch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's there. There are plenty of counter examples to that. Well, and I think Spotify. Hmm. Spot. There's some merit to what Spotify's saying. Yes. I think I I think there is. I mean. Um, uh, I, I, I'm again. I'm not a business analyst, so I can't say what what Spotify could or should do to be around in the next five years without being relabeled, you know, Facebook Music. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I mean, actually, that, that might even be a that might that might even be a good uh, a good fit for both companies. Facebook has been failing to right. get the deals they need to get. Spotify is just basically this big ball of big ball of, of 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 legal papers that are valuable to have in one way or another unless the entire music industry just hates spotify and just wants it to die 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 uh but the thing it's they, they have a they have a valid point i, I do think this is going to be a conversation that's going to be con that's going to continue to be had over the next three four five years again it comes back to the point of what is Apple delivering for that 30 cents off of every dollar that they're charging? And yes, they could say, oh, well, we were delivering all these wonderful uh, iPhone customers. But guess what? There is no other way to get an app on this phone other than to go through the Apple store, the iTunes, uh, the iTunes store, which means that there's no way to get an app on this phone to those customers unless you give uh, you, you let uh, Apple let it speak. And I think that they, it should be able to uh participate in uh, some of the profits that are being generated by the store but it's going to become more and more of a hardship but when the uh, apple when the itunes when the apple store excuse me when the app store began there was one big loaf of bread that's being sliced into moderately very few pieces uh, and so there are a lot of opportunities for a lot of those early developers to be very, very happy. Now it's a situation in which you are either a gold mining farm that makes crap apps that uh, just simply generates 
money based on the ability to psychologically torment people who have a brain that's wired up to not be able to reject a bad deal when an offer is made to you at the time when your brain is most successful successful to it. But there are now thousands and thousands of people who just cannot make a dime off of it. And that 30 cents is really, really important. And it's, you can, again, they're very, very valuable customers. But when you're telling these people that there is no way you can possibly get your product, get your, your work of art, your work of creativity uh, published unless you get approval, go through all these hoops, some of which seem uh, onerous and unnecessary, and then also give them 30 cents off the top. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to, it's, it's, it's not going to kill the iPhone. It's not going to put Apple in any danger whatsoever, but it means that when some people have an idea for an app, they're going to start to see what are the alternatives. Uh, we will make an Apple, we'll make an aversion for iOS, but is there a better deal we can get elsewhere? We, we've already seen uh, a lot of uh, Mac OS developers already turn tail and run because they're just, it's not even the 30% the cut. It's like you are wasting too much of our time with stuff that is not important to us, the developers, the developer of this app or the customers of this app. We are making us do stuff that only makes Mac OS more important and more uh, and, and, and more salient uh, to, to, to Apple, nothing for us or for our customers. And so what happens when the day comes when Apple says, we were gonna we we feel as though the Mac Mac OS is not secure enough by allowing unsigned apps. So from now on, you can only install apps that are completely signed and can only be bought through the App Store. Think about the revolution that would happen then. You'd have a lot of people saying, Okay, goodbye. We're not doing this anymore. Right. We're, this is not worth it for eight percent of the of the desktop market worldwide. Uh, and as the as the iPhone's market share continues to not necessarily drop, but not grow at the same rate as the Android installed user base grows, there might be a time when a lot of people are saying, we will, of course, we cannot be credible unless we're doing versions for iOS as well as any other platform we're doing, but we are going to put most of our effort in the one where we can actually make the most money, and that might not necessarily always be iOS. That's all I'm saying. It, it, I don't think it might not always be, but it'll be that way for the next 10 years. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, that, we're far from that point, obviously. I mean, the thing is, right. is that it's not just the number of users, it's the it's the quality of the purchase, you know, and I think that that is uh, <clears throat> the thing that Android still has a lot of trouble with, you know, and I think well, that, that is that's, the, the, the hard part. When, when you compare apples to apples, that gap is a lot narrower than it looks. Uh, you're oftentimes, when you look at the, the the broader number, you're also looking at phones that are blister pack phones that are sold for to, to be used for like six months. You're talking about limited feature phones that uh, are being uh, sold in uh, developing that markets that are relatively new to the smartphone market. You're not necessarily talking about the same person, the same sort of consumer that's buying uh, that's buying iPhones. Um, I, but I, I guess if I'm going to be honest. I wish that uh, I wish that Apple had a really good answer for why thirty cents off of every dollar. I wish it were something better than because we're <laughs> we don't you 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 have your only alternative is to not sell <laughs> not sell. Well, what makes uh, us think that's a high number? So like again, when when we talk to people in the past, and no it's one really mentions number. it now. But but is it a high number based on 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 what metrics? Because there are people who sell through stores, but selling through stores has all sorts of awareness. There's there's a complete package from transaction to delivery to marketing to featuring that's provided for that thirty percent. And I'm not sure. Like, I think the assumption is these days that it's a high number, but I'm not sure everyone, especially those who remember selling software prior to the, because it's easy after the app store to say, oh, this is a lot of money. But if you remember selling before the app store, again, the initial wave of developers wasn't like, this is a lot of money. This is, oh my God, I can't believe they're all doing this for 30%. So I'm interested in, you know, what if anything yeah, I, has I changed? Mean, as a, since well, someone who's I'm developed saying, software well, I'm and that sold it. It's, it, I think there are limits to what Apple's app actually providing. I can't, I, I can't, uh, I can't name the number of times where I have had the actual name of an app that I wanted to buy and download, but oh, yeah. could not find it in the I app mean, store. Yes. That's yeah. like that's anti-marketing. Yeah, you know, it's it, you're you're great if you're one of the top-selling apps. You're great if you're an editor's choice app. You've, you're great if you won, uh, won a won a won an annual award, but it's not helping you squat for actually marketing your app it's yeah, still your it responsibility does, it does though depend about. very much on what the what the what the market is and what the app is or Google's whatever is still the same right 30, like google is still 30 percent 30 percent is reasonable in some cases and not and it's clearly yeah. not uh vi whether it's reasonable or not it's not viable for spotify so that you know that's it's a blanket number apple just 
pulled out of the air. Well, it I sounded mean, good if, at the time, we, and I'm sure I mean, it, it, well, it is still for a lot of like developers. It looks like Google's still using it. So, I mean, it's not, right. it's not just well, an they Apple. Well, they looked at Apple and they said, what is Apple charging? Yeah. Oh, we'll do the well, same. But I, I, I think we, I think we to underestimate, I mean, as someone who's developed software, I think we underestimate the cost of a sale, and I think we also underestimate the cost of well, the that's DRM. that's what I'm saying. I think for, a software, for some software and, developers, it makes a lot of sense. But, but if we, and if we gave... Uh, big business, you know, people who already have it established a much lower rate, then you'd have all these little developers going, you know, we're right. getting screwed. You know, you know, so, you know, no, no. Like, why I agree. For me, then it is, I'd be upset. I'd be like, well, it's going to 15% you know, for subscriptions. That'd be the yeah. issue. Yeah, and I think that's Apple's response to this issue. I I'm sure that that's not sufficient for Spotify, particularly since it doesn't kick in until after a year of subscription. Uh, so, you know, the, the first year of a new customer is still going to cost you 30%. Although if I, I were Daniel Eck, if I were Spotify's CEO, I, at this point, I would be doing everything I could to curry favor with the music industry. I would get rid of the free tier or whatever it is I needed to do because your your success or failure at this point is going to depend on how much the music industry goes to the bad. Or Mark here. Zuckerberg, yes. like Andy suggested. Well, I do like that <laughs> idea. I'm sure yeah, he's considering that as well. Highly viable that's idea. That's probably the only reasonable exit you can see. I, I think uh, Spotify is way too valuable for anybody to, for, for it not to exist five years from now. Again, it, it'll be, it might be rebranded by then. The, the executives and the engineers might have already moved on after being an incompatible fit for whoever buys them. Or the executives who run the company may be now a, a CEO, co-CEO of the company, but it's too valuable to, to not exist anymore. Yeah, yeah and uh, the music and industry, like most content providers, they're, like Facebook might say, oh, it's free when you have your Facebook account or with this. And the danger for them is that like book, like authors, they don't want their work to be seen as zero value. Even if you're, you are quote unquote paying with data or paying with attention, they want money to to exist alongside with what they're producing because in their minds, that 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 is represents the value, long-term value of what they're creating. Yeah. yeah, but you, you can the, the music industry is in a lot of the same trouble that, uh, for instance, the the news industry yes. uh, is is in. In that it's you can basically see, you you can say you know what I insist that I, I'm gonna, my work is more valuable than free, and I refuse to give what to put my my music on a streaming service and give it away for free because I, blah blah blah. Well. That's nice, and j by all means, you're you're responsible for your own choices, and don't uh, I, no one should complain that you're behind the times or anything. That's your choice to make, but you're not fighting people who are being mean and unfair. You are fighting a generation that does not associate itself with. I'm going to give you nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and you're going to give me twelve tracks that I will then keep and own forever. This is a generation that thinks of music as a very fluid uh, uh, and fungible sort of item that only exists in terms of a month monthly access so the thing is once you, i you, you, i have to really if if uh maybe uh, because i'm an old fogey the better analogy just for for this purpose is that uh buying music that is not available online i have to freaking love a band or love an album in order to buy a CD, and if that person, if that band decides I'm not going to, this is not going to be available through iTunes, it's not going to be available as Amazon MP3. You only have to buy, you have to buy a, a physical CD. Oh boy, it's not that I'm not going to protest and say, oh, here's, here, I'm going to stick it to you by not actually buying this. I'm going to say, okay, well, I. How much did Sam hard. Goody take of the uh, face value of a CD? Must must have been around fifty percent. <laughs> well, uh, it wasn't, well, it wasn't the contract, 50, it was, the printing, you, the press. How, how much was it, stuff. Alex? You worked in a record store. Yeah, so sixteen uh, sixteen dollar. Uh, uh, the one stop would um, get it for nine. I believe nine ninety nine or, or something like that. So it's the still one roughly would, a third. So huh? if you were, and so this gets into the little one versus. So if you were a direct retailer, you would buy it at that. So if you were Sam Goody or Camelot or National Record Mart or whatever, you would get it at that price. But at the one stop, uh, if, but all the little guys had to buy it from the one stop, and then right. they would get it for that, and then they'd have to, you know, they but they would get it for two dollars more than that, and so they would get a, a lower, um, you know, they. But have I just mean if you're more. the if you're the if you're the record company, you're still only getting. 60% or of the face oh, value yeah, of the CD, yeah, you right? That. But it was more. I mean, it was a, it was a big number. And, and we... Was it more than 70%? We there, it wasn't more than 70%. No, no, I mean, it wasn't, not, not percentage-wise. It was just an absurd amount of money. But it was a lot of money, right? While they, while they got a certain percentage of the retail, uh, the you have to remember that the cost of a production of a, of a CD no, I when I was doing it in early 90s was 44 cents. Uh, but I think that's when Apple said 30%, that seemed like a good thing or not an unreasonable thing based no, on... No, I don't think, I don't think 30% is unreasonable yeah. for what they, you know, I, I think that's the problem is that, is that, uh, 
all the other distribution methods uh, generally are more expensive than that. Precisely. Wholesale is 55. I still remember when I was writing actual physical books and they would say 55% inside. You just go, ah, uh, because you, yeah. oh, yeah. you know how little you got like maybe... Seven to ten percent of of the fifty five. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted my signing. Yeah. I just wanted my signing bonus to be a certain like whatever that was. I wanted like that's I can be happy with that number because I may never see another dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so the, there's <laughs> always a middleman, and they always dollars. take a cut. And Apple's cut is not unreasonable. The real problem is that Spotify's business model sucks. That's yeah, the real problem. Business, multiple middlemen is not sustainable. Right. Anymore. Right. Uh, that's the, that's the fundamental issue, and uh, that's not going to go away anytime soon. Well, and I and I still think that I think we're going to see uh, whether it's Title or whether it's Apple. I think that w the move that needs to be made uh, at some point. And I think everyone's afraid to make it because of the ripples it'll make. But cutting the music industry out of the middle of that, I think, is probably the next step. I mean, for someone like Apple, and that's what you know, with a uh, with the talent base that Apple picked up with Beats. Uh, it wouldn't be very hard for them to move into being. The did you production. see that Rolling Stone article, Alex? I did not. Tell us about it. Oh, yeah. So the Rolling Stone was talking about how Apple's been secretly, quote unquote, funding um, videos by Drake. Tim Cook had uh, input into the MIA's video, and I still would love to hear what that the, conversation. What could, <laughs> what could Tim Cook tell MIA? I think you got to do the Roger Rabbit in that part, not the Cabbage Patch. <laughs> this is Tim. I mean, like they they have been funding and getting in deeply involved. That's with my point exactly. Of, that's yeah. so. That's the strategy, right? Just suck up to the artists. And by the way, the artists are more important than the music industry because the artists will ultimately will drive this, not not the not Capitol Records. Um, so suck up to the artists, make them happy, and I mean, if you make the music industry happy too, that's not so bad. But those connections are—is that why they want to buy Title? And by the way, that's a rumor. Did Apple even confirm that? I think that they—they no. they didn't say no, anything. No, but, absolutely not. But it would kind of make sense. Too, it's not a lot of subscribers. You don't buy it for the subs, do you? And by the no, way, you if buy you buy it. Title, you don't get the deals either, right? Because Prince's deal, for instance, with Title is with Title and doesn't get transferred to a new owner. That's those are all renegotiated. Probably typically. depends on yeah on the different contracts. Typically, typically, yeah. Also, love yeah, Rolling Empire. Stone is all about Larry Jackson, who is one of people. He's in charge of Apple's original music content, and he was talking about Tim Cook uh, contributing to MIA's Borders video That's and Drake's Hotline Bling video, Taylor Swift's tour movie, and The Weeknd's Can't Feel My Face. They all those were all funded by Apple. Well, there and, you and, go. And, Right. I mean, the thing is, is that for Apple, it would be almost a rounding error to completely <laughs> compete head to head with every record company there if they wanted to. Like if they just wanted to say, hey, let's sign Taylor Swift, let's sign, you know, because a lot of these, the, the, the more established ones like Taylor Swift have their own publishing company at this point. They're not, you right. know, the, the music industry is more of a distribution method for them. Yeah. And the There's, question is, what are not they? much of a future as a distribution business is there right well when you look at a katie perry who's got 90 million followers uh what does she need from her record company right nothing nothing you know like you know if, if you know and, and that's the you know she can she could tweet you know that she's got a new album and she'll sell a million you know mm -hmm. you know and, and on Apple music she'll just get a lot of downloads right well and beyonce and all the big the big stars today right uh and that's why if you're apple you go to drake direct you go to the weekend <laughs> And, and, and I think the part of it is, is this embrace of, of having them get that there could be a better side as they negotiate the next deal with the record companies. Sure. Because a lot of them are, are caught in these three or five year. Um, Talk about bad business models. The record company is not exactly a great business model either. Right. I mean, yeah. historically, they own so much, though. Right. Yeah. They got the catalog. We have, we, have, we have the story about from last year about how. Uh, uh, Weird Al Yankovic finally, after what seventeen years, is now <laughs> has now completed the terms of his original uh, yeah. album what? contract. You're kidding. Well, yeah, he statistically, had, is he doing his contractual obligation album now? No, no, he, he's <laughs> done. He's free, and now he's and now and now that is now it's that that's 2014, 15, 16. That's amazing. He's basically saying that he may not necessarily be releasing albums anymore. That it may make more sense for him sure. to release individual tracks. Sure. Uh, I mean, the, the whole business is completely different. The, sure. the the question is not like the, the question is now what can Apple give to Taylor Swift that would not be greater than what Taylor Swift would bring to Apple. Uh, and there's a question about how how much of that deal would be great. You're going to give me X X X X options on Apple stock uh, over the next five years. Uh, you're going to here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do, and the, I'm going to be my appearance is going to be limited to X. Your window of exclusivity is going to be Y. Uh, 
new what i'm thinking what gets me most curious are new artists who are coming up who aren't growing up with necessarily the old style fantasies of i'm going to be the rolling stones i'm going to be making 100 million dollars a year off of my records and off of my tours these are people who basically are thinking about i'm going to have my own music business called myband.com uh, and if we can make a good living wage and enough to put some money into a 401k that will be my definition of success and these people are going to think well why sh wh why would i necessarily want to be wh i'm sorry they, they wouldn't necessarily not want to do a deal with apple or with google music or with uh, or with uh, amazon but they would be like let me take a look at other ways that i can distribute this that will actually work towards my business model because i think that most of these people who are growing up who want to make a business Business of publishing music and, and touring, they're not thinking in terms of the the way the music business was uh, through the 1960s to the 1990s. There's a great quote from a music manager who says, it's just a partnership to do cool uh, stuff. It's almost like getting paid to wake up and eat breakfast. You're going to do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, it makes the Beats acquisition uh, look like a good thing uh, in terms of the long-term strategy of this, right? Now... It kind of starts to make sense. You you not you you got a kind of failing music service and a headphone business you didn't want, but what you got was Jimmy Iovine and relationships with the music industry and a long term play that makes you uh, the incumbent in the music business, right? Makes you the big boy. It's like platform exclusives in the early oh, days of yes. console gaming. Well, and, and I think that the other thing is, yeah, Apple has a lot of, a lot to gain by, they can do things that wouldn't make sense for the record industry. So, for instance, Apple growing their installed base from, uh, you know, the 15 million or whatever the number is right now to 100 million is worth a lot of money to Apple. So exclusives can theoretically be worth a lot, you know, so signing, let's say, a Taylor Swift and saying, here's the deal, we'll pay you $15 million for the exclusive for a year for your album or whatever, um, you know, plus all the sales that you would normally get. You know, this is a sign. Apple is no law. You, you know, one of the things we, we were talking about this on Sunday, I think that Apple is not used to be. It was a hardware business. It's not a hardware business anymore. Absolutely and, not. And so this is this is all part of a transition for Apple into a new, into a hybrid product business. Yeah, content being a content business, being a, a cloud services business, a very well, and one very of the different. That, well, no, it's a, I, I hope they. I just hope they don't move to the, uh, the, 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 old, the, the old saying about Hollywood is that they don't make movies, they make deals. <laughs> right. It's an investment so that, but if you think, business, but if you think about it, what, uh, the, the hardware business fueled all of this, obviously. Um, but it, but, but the, uh, and until recently, the whole point was all of these synergies help sell hardware. We kept saying that it's all about selling more iPhones. But I think that we've come to the time now in Apple's life cycle where it isn't anymore about it's that. revenue well, I, per I, customer and both all these revenue things help per drive customer that. isn't that yeah. interesting right but i think that yeah. i think we're looking at the transition and i think if apple manages that transition well because they're still making an enormous amount of money on the hardware probably you know considerably more than what they're making on the software but uh or the services but i that won't always be the case um i think there's a lot a lot more upside for that i think the one thing apple does have to be careful of is actually going down this path too quickly i think you know sometimes you think oh they could just because they really could just put 10 billion dollars into something and just push push it down the path but one of the big advantages for instance one of the things that undermines spotify's ability to uh, claim any kind of antitrust is that apple doesn't have the uh, majority you know it doesn't right. have a, a control it's a very state, competitive you know? environment yep and that really undermines all the arguments around antitrust people can say well the iphone is different but it's still mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's a phone mm -hmm. you know and, and it's and it's a minority phone and i yep. think that apple i think the one thing that apple's probably very careful to walk that line aren't they yeah and and i think that you know that if they switch from 100 million 100 million users let's say with apple music <laughs> and the next closest thing was 10 million apple would have all kinds of antitrust right. issues that they'd have to deal yep. with but they don't and also what what, what seems like anti what 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 seems to a layman as antitrust is just simply the facts of life of and a successful company entering your business. Right. I mean, the the the, well, the most. I was really sad, uh, as a lot of people were last week, to learn that TechServe in New York, this legendary mm -hmm. independent uh, Apple store and service bay, is closing. Uh, and it's not because of Apple is an antitrust corporation. It's that they are they have Apple stores and they're basically sucking every customer away from any independent uh, repair outlet or any uh, repair any retail outlet. Not necessarily because not not because uh, they're mean and they're unfair, but because they decided that it's very valuable for the company to uh, not only be providing that part of the customer experience, but also to capture customer data 
uh, in the form of they can actually take a look at almost every iPhone that breaks, almost every MacBook right. that breaks, and use that to inform the design of next of new hardware. They they really believe that's go that's going to be part of the beautiful experience, that beautiful package that they deliver to their customers. And if TechServe goes away, uh, sorry, the fact that TechServe had to go away. It's not antitrust. That's just unfortunate uh, facts of life in, in the business world. Although, and by the way, TechServe was a sponsor, and uh, I, too, am saddened by it. I, I, uh, I think it's a good thing for the ecosystem to have these third-party Yeah, uh, Te TechServe, I think that, TechServe I think was, in its way, even more fun to be at than any Apple store. Yeah. Well, you know, I think of my friend you, you Tom think, Santos. You a cold bottle of Coke at, uh, at an Apple store. I think of my friend Tom Santos, who ran Mac Adam in San Francisco, which was a great uh, Apple VAR and uh, independent Apple store, and that was where I would go to uh, buy my Mac Cube, for instance. Yep. Um, Computer town of Nashua, New Hampshire. It was, a, it was, a, it was the, the tradition in every, every household in Massachusetts that you, could, you would drive about an hour to Nashua, mm -hmm. tax-free New Hampshire. You would make enough money. You would save enough money on sale, state sales tax to <laughs> pay for gas and have a really nice dinner once you get there. And so that's why it's... it's, it's but it's, Tom it's like always a, complained, and I think a lot of the uh, VARs did complain, that Apple would not... They would they would play some games in like not getting them the latest stuff right away, undercutting them a little bit in other ways. And of course, once the Apple stores uh, gained steam, it was hopeless for these guys. And well, I don't. I think that, and I, the I, same I, way that I, I think losing Spotify would be a loss for us as end users, I think losing those independent resellers is a loss for us as end users. And I, um, that, I mean, I, I, I don't think Apple's being mean about it, but I do think it's a shame. It's a shame, right? Exactly. Just well, I think that just I like. That, oh, sorry, go ahead. If, you have to see where you where you fit into an ecosystem, you know, where where you are, you know. And I think that a value added reseller um, uh, needs to find how they're really going to add value. What are they going to be, you know, what part of the market can they serve that going to an Apple store, like as a video or audio professional, going to a Apple store does not help other than buying the base component. So how do you package those things together in a way that that makes sense, you know? And I think that. Um, well, I think TechServe was doing a pretty good job. They were they doing were. system integration. Also, they were, I mean, they were really a great, they added a lot of value. Yeah, there's, there, there's, there's lots of what, to, what Alex is saying. Um, another thing, but another part is that sometimes it really just, it's not enough. Seems like, <laughs> it, well, it seems like uh, you're reacting to a change in the weather that you really right. can't do anything about. It's not any fault of your own. If Walmart comes into your town and they are, it's the one of those superstores that is, is selling groceries and vegetables and they have a car, they have a tire, a tire store and all this, all these other sort of things. It doesn't matter that you are objectively providing better produce at competitive prices and better personalized service. People are going to see Walmart that's going to be the closer to the highway. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it, there's, there's very little you can do. It really is like Nail, nail boards over the windows. You will well, either and I, well, survive and, and, and and some consumers. Are, well, musicians probably are rooting for the end of the death of Spotify and increasingly rooting for the success of Apple, uh, just as probably initially authors and publishers rooted for the success of Amazon. Be careful what you wish for, though, because a shrinking ecosystem and a monoculture is not in the long run good for anybody. Well, uh, the other thing that's happening is that, and this happens more in video, but like companies might want to do their own services. Like they might decide that this record label is going to put out its own service because it doesn't have to pay any percentage or share any revenue with anybody. And they barely do it with artists. And then movie companies might do the same thing. You'll have to go to warnerbrothers.com to get the Warner Brothers catalog. And that'll be horrible for consumers because right now we sort of have, you know, iTunes gets us almost everything or Google Play gets us well, almost I, everything. And I think that the, I think the math on that is going to get harder and harder to justify. I mean, so it, it, it's one thing when people are getting, you know, a, a small number of of, uh, of dollars right now at 15 million or 30 million paid subscribers. But when you get to 100 million, 150 million, 200 million, whoever gets to that number, you know, those numbers get to be pretty big numbers, even if they're small percentages. And it becomes difficult to think that you're going to go do that on your own. Now, there's a handful of people like Peter Gabriel who sell all of this stuff, I think, pretty much directly, you know, and he doesn't really get a lot of airplay. He doesn't really get a lot of, but, you know, he, I'm sure he makes plenty, um, you know, and, and, and that's the way he likes to control it. But I think that, um, I think for most people that, that model is going to become more and more difficult as the number of um, subscribers grow. I mean, it, it's one thing when subscriptions were a small percentage of the market, but they are about to become, you know, 80% of the market. And, you know, giving those up will be very difficult to, to survive on or to at least really make a good living on. So doomed. Well, it's, it's, it's very, it, and I, I think that's very, that's not very different from, you know, the, the, the careers in journalism these days where it just simply you uh, there is still opportunities for success as a matter of fact and 
from some perspectives or even greater opportunities for success than there were when I started out like a quarter, God damn it, a quarter century ago. Uh, but it's the definition of success has changed where if uh, if I had pursued a traditional path, my let's say let's say I got started even five years earlier. If I were five years older, my idea of You'd success. You'd be Dwight Silverman and with. <laughs> my, my, well, but my, 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 tech, my, the tech industry. Well, my, my, my goal, my, my end game goal would be I'm going to be an executive editor. I'm going to be a publisher. I'm going to be an executive at the company that works for. I'm going to have a, a job of responsibility. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a suite on the top floor with the ebony, everything and the solid gold, whatever. Uh, now it's more like I can do my journalism and I can also. Uh, the fact if I if this column is successful or if, if my traditional journalism is successful, I will have other opportunities to make money doing other things that support and surround that journalism as well. So it's it's a music, I think, is going to be exactly the same way. You're, again, I don't think that there are people who are growing up today who are the 14, 15, 16 years old composing music in their bedrooms that are thinking that I'm going to be making a million dollars every three months uh, off of album <laughs> sales and concert tours. I think that their goals, they, they can define success as I'm going to, if I'm really wildly successful, I'm going to make maybe $200,000 a year, right. which is a- Just make a living. Just darn, make a living. Which is, a, yeah. which, which, which is better good than living. living. That's, yeah. that's, that's if, you do, if you don't get into to cocaine or folk dancing, right. you can retire <laughs> at age 40 because your, your retirement will be completely funded. Is folk so dancing a- a very expensive habit. Uh, <laughs> very special shoes. Uh, cocaine you need for folk dancing. Yes. But it's the same in if, media. It's the I same think they, what their dream is. Can I? How can I get Tim Cook to advise me on my music video? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think I think that's where a lot of these these uh, these companies go astray. They really think that they're going to say, "Hey, I got. I, I'll, I know how I can keep it, keep these people on board. I'll just dangle these really really lucrative recording contracts with our publishing company, not realizing that these people don't care about that anymore. Or they'll say, "We'll make you an exclusive, and we'll make sure that you're available on our our online store. So that's great. So, and I'll be getting all the data back on who's buying." my music so I can contact them about my upcoming tours and other things. Well, no, that's proprietary. We we protect the security of our customers' data. Say, well, thank you. I don't want to deal with Apple then because I would much rather have... Uh, I got I got an email this morning that I didn't notice because I was out at breakfast from Louis C.K.'s like auto ma mailbox saying that, oh, by the way, I'm doing a secret <laughs> comedy set wow. at the Paradise Theater smart. in Boston. So smart. Tickets go... And tickets are only available by going to the box office physically and buying wow. tickets. And they're available as from the moment that this email goes out and the show is tonight at eight. So smart. And that's so that's smart. stuff that he can do because he has right. he people are buying things directly from him. Someone like Louis C.K. who has the ability to say, "I don't want a deal with." I mean, if if Apple said, "I want," if Apple offered him a deal that was different from the deal that he has at FX, which is basically, "I agree to make TV shows for you, and you don't have anything to say about it except for that you're going to be paying me a very small amount of money." Apple might say, but Tim has some notes for you. He's Tim. Like, I don't care. Tim. Tim's not a comedian. I don't care. what. This Tim Rolling Stone article is really interesting. They point out that uh, Apple has an exclusive with Chance the Rapper and his coloring book. You can only hear it on Apple Music because Chance has no label and is not selling downloads. Uh, they talk about uh, Larry Jackson, who's running all of this. Uh, he was at Interscope with Jimmy Iovine. And uh, Jackson signed Lana Del Rey and says that because Del Rey was an artist made for and by the Internet. So rather than spending money on radio, they convinced he convinced Interscope to channel all the budget into videos to appear on uh, YouTube. And in fact, without any singles in radio rotation, her album Born to Die debuted at number two on Billboard and went platinum. Well, and, and one of the things you can do that now. Is, you can do that. that. That's the yeah, future. And one, and one of the things to think about is that as the as uh, music gets bigger, wh whether it's, you know, whatever subscription service gets really big, it really becomes the next radio, you know, and, and right now, I think the next radio is really YouTube at the moment. But I think that the, uh, you know, a lot of us don't really listen to radio stations anymore. Um, you know, my, you know, you just hear my kids just con constantly running around calling out, you know, play, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and that's kind of their, you know, that's their experience. They don't have any experience of, uh, you know, that, the, you just look at this next generation. I mean, I, I, you know, they, they don't have an experience of uh, listening to the radio. No, in fact, you know? uh, this this uh, one of the record executives they quote in this article says, "Apple's the MTV of this of the of now, right? Apple is as important <laughs> to music now as MTV was in the '80s and the '90s. I think that's I probably more, true, more, and, and more YouTube important. maybe as well, right? Yep. 
Although YouTube not a, not always official again. music again. Well, what's so, interesting, Apple. I mean, Apple funding videos is very interesting, isn't it? Do they want to become like the official place, like Vivo is for for music videos? Where, where on is there an Apple like Apple.com well, slash trailers? Is there a or is think, it it's well, on I, iTunes? I guess. And I think I think they want. To, I mean, I think over time they want to keep on having more and more exclusives on music. I mean, that's yeah. how you grow that number. So, yeah. so I think exclusive videos is the easy way to do that first. Uh, but being exclusive to and showing that that's got some legs and it generates revenue, I think they are doing it very slowly and very carefully. Because the other thing is that you know, obviously, I mean, I think that you can't be in the music industry and not realize what Apple could do to you at any minute <laughs> you know and so so but at the same time you don't want to scare everybody off they're i think they're happy to have a subscription service i think every, i think the industry was trying to hold that out for a little while um and so uh so i think that um you know apple is going very cautiously towards that but it, i think at some point they start to uh especially with these new bands that just aren't even making it to radio aren't even making it to to releasing cds i think that that's going to be um, a place where it gets really interesting where Apple just starts sucking them in the way YouTube has in some ways. You know, a lot of these, whether it's Facebook or, or YouTube or Apple, I mean, I think all of them are really looking at how do we how do we build the relationship with these bands before they become the next Beyonce and Taylor I Swift. Just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I have to, I, I, there are times where I have to be very, very clear that I'm not saying that a proposition is wrong, only that I don't understand the logic behind that proposition. I still can't figure out what Apple can tell an up and coming artist. I'm not talking about someone who's already has a has a really good career going. I'm talking about again, the person that is 14 right now, but is going to be a huge star when they're 17 or 18. I don't understand what they can offer them that would be better than exploiting whatever resources they can exploit independently. Well, I think that you give I mean I, I, I ask chance so, the rapper. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I think that the providing uh, PR, I mean, if you're a little band trying to get out there, and, and let's say it's not 15 million subscribers, let's say it's 100 million subscribers. Um, at 100 million subscribers, we're going to we're gonna give you X amount of money uh, up, up front, which is what the record companies do. But we're also going to, you know, maybe we make a, you know, we're going to give you a, this much money up front. And then we're going to promote you on the front pages. We're going to put you on one. We're going to put you on, you know, all these, there's all these other things that that apple can do for you um that make it you know that take a lot of the risk out of you getting off the ground that's pretty clearly the um, point of beats much, one right okay but yeah. how but how many people how many artists can they do that for sorry yeah how, well, many, how many artists like, not not thousands obviously but well yeah, i mean what if you're it's always been that way right you're not one of the eight lucky bands you always have hoped to be yeah, by, <laughs> by apple you, you, you actually so i like so mca i, I just i'm just saying that i like i like the youtube model where the, the you get you, you are it. popular you're popular and successful because you have five million people subscribing to your channel and every one of your music pieces of music gets at least two million views and nobody you didn't have to cut a deal with anybody you didn't have to uh, get again get blessed you didn't have to sign any uh, any contract say I will I will give you something exclusive and you will promote me and you will oh please oh please big corporation help make me a success please help me find my audience it's the yeah, audience still, finding this person I, yeah, it just getting, seems like it just seems like an old yeah but ask jack sort of ask model. jack conti uh of pomplamus how youtube fame and stardom made him no money at all that's why he founded patreon remember they did a tour and they lost their shirt uh and i think pomplamus was a is a is a great band and they did well on youtube but it wasn't enough for them to make a living well but, and i think that the the thing is is that they you know i the uh I mean, the big advantage is, I mean, the record companies have been screwing these artists for a long time. I and mean, I had a, I had a set of friends that were in Pittsburgh and they were, you know, they put together a, you know, a band and they got signed by MCA and then MCA, you know, paid for them to put their album out, you know, put their album together. And then MCA just got bought by somebody else who wasn't interested in, by Universal, who wasn't interested in releasing it, but still owned all the copyrights. And so basically they lost access to all their songs. And if you don't think that, and that was happening probably a thousand bands a year. We're like that, you know, like, like just make sure that that's not like an isolated thing. When I was working in the industry, there were bands that were constantly getting driven under by these record companies. And so the, the, you know, there are a lot of reasons why these guys, you know, don't necessarily need to need to be part of that, that, that little wheel. Um, in addition to that, you know, sell, you know, how many songs can you actually write 
at you know even two million views a, a pop. That's a couple thousand dollars. It's not enough. That's you know maybe enough to you know help with the, help with your parents' rent, but it's not going to be you know millions of views is not going is is just not enough. What you want to do is turn that millions of views into either sponsorships or people you know paying for something which to tour on into YouTube, a successful tour. Or, you know, or into a tour or yeah. into those types of things or, or into a record, you know, um, contract, you know, and that's right. what everyone's trying to do. What if Apple becomes that record contract? I don't and think the record contract. Well, okay. But 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 they, there's a, how long, how long would it take for Apple to start screwing these artists? Not as badly <laughs> as MCA. I don't think, but I don't think that they need I, to though, because the thing is, is that Apple, is, the thing is, is that Apple has, this is a much different thing is because Apple is, you know, it's, I would argue that it's a different different culture where it'll be very much like it. everyone's going to get, you know, you're going to give you this great deal to get started. Um, Apple doesn't need to necessarily, eat, you know, twist, twist every little piece of blood out of you to get it because they just wanted to increase the number of subscribers that they had. And so they, so that's, it's, you know, what they're trying to get out of it is very different. Um, you know, because they're not, you know, they don't have to make money. They don't have a guy there that's got to make money from you. You know, they just, they're playing this bigger thing and you get this opportunity now as a band, you still have to promote yourself. I mean, Apple's going to give you a head start because they want to make money on that and they want to expand their service based on you. But then they can, but then, then you have to go out and promote yourself. You have to do all the things that you would have to do otherwise, except that every time someone watches your video, it, you know, it, you know, you get paid for it, you know, and, and, and you do that to some degree with, with YouTube when they watch your videos, but it's a lot easier to listen to say, Hey, I want to listen to this band than it is to find you on YouTube. No one look. Artists are just are very confused. At least as confused as we are about the, what what it looks like to be successful artists uh, in in this day and age. And and I do agree with Andy that that I think that is not going to be the same. It's not we're it's not going to see that many something more. Something is going on, and we don't know what's going to happen. Well, also with media, also with apps, almost every everything in industry where you create content yeah. or every industry. Yeah, like the razor blade industry. Think about you know if you were. Gillette, and you're looking at a company yes. like Harry's, you got to say, what the hell? We're being disrupted. We're being disrupted, and we don't <laughs> like it. Harry's is a place where you can go and get great razor blades uh, at half the cost of a Gillette. What a pro. What a pro. <laughs> I was trying not to call it out. I was in there like, should I say something? That was amazing. <laughs> What a segue. I mean, it was like it was like a beat-to-beat -beat segue. But it's not an accident because really what we, the people who advertise in these – Shows are the same people who are benefiting from this new disruptive economy, right? And, and you know, uh, with the exception of Ford, um, all of our advertisers are, 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 are people who are saying, you know, there's a new way of doing things. Why go to the drugstore and pay, you know, $8 a blade when you get it for $2 a blade from Harry's? And these are great blades. They, they bought the factory in Germany that makes them. High-quality, high-performance German blades are crafted by shaving experts. The flex hinge contours to your face. They got the aloe lubricating strip. Gives you a nice finish. Uh, it's a great shave. Factory direct. So half the price of the leading brands. They ship right to your doorstep. Over a million guys have made the switch to Harry's. It's a wonderful website. Go visit because they have really started to expand their product range. They have an iOS app. See, they don't mind 30% to Apple. They're thrilled. You can, in four taps, you can you can set up your Harry's account and start getting those blades and get one of the great Harry kits. I use the uh, Winston. I'm a I'm a Winston guy. A lot of people like, Steve Gibson likes the Truman. He likes the the kind of more plastic uh, handle because it's, it's grippy. They've got a nice new grippy finish, by the way. Uh, when you get the kit, it's very affordable. $15 for the Truman kit. You get a razor handle, uh, three blades, you get your choice of shave cream or foaming shave gel, and it's not a sample trial size; it's a full size, and it's wonderful. And then, then you're set up. You subscribe. By the way, they now now have a, a really nice uh, face lotion that I use. I've been walking in, and of course, I'm not going to walk in in the with that f fireball in the sky beating down on you without putting on some uh, SPF 15 there on my face. It's non-greasy. It's lightweight. Hydrates, protects, and it all comes right to your door. This is, remember the milkman? <laughs> that was so great. The milkman came and they gave you, and they brought you milk. And you would have milk. <laughs> this is like the milkman for razor blades. They come to your door. It, I, it, the only thing missing is the horse-drawn carriage and the little clink of bottles as they put them on your doorstep. Harry's, try it out. Harry's.com slash Mac break and back. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to give you $5 off your first purchase. $5 off your first purchase when you go to Harry's.com slash Mac break. 
the old is new again. The milkman is back. Only this time he's bringing you razors and shave cream. Harry's. I made that up. I don't think they, I don't know if they're going to like that or not at the Harry's factory. Did he just call us milkmen? <laughs> <laughs> milk people. Milk. I miss the milkman. <laughs> Do you, any of you guys old enough to remember milk? We never, I, I've seen it on TV. Like when they bring, like, I've glass seen it things. on TV. They bring like glass bottles. Yeah. And, like I remember when they still had milk. We and they wear a white in, suit with a black bow tie, like the good humor guy in a little special hat. See, our culture I, I, is different, Leo. We went to Peretz and we got milk in plastic bags, and you put those plastic bags into a plastic holder. And that, and my friend, is why Canada will never be number one. <laughs> Belgium, Canada. <laughs> I just, I, I mainly know, uh, I mainly know that 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 career from, uh, I guess, the, mo the modern version. Be, you know, I've been, I've been writing about technology since you were nothing but a gleam in the razor delivery person's <laughs> eye. <laughs> We had to carry our razors, Leo, in our hands across snow-covered mountains, barefoot, uphill. Uh, I, just, I, just our razors, I, just, I just couldn't. I just couldn't help but but think about like all of, like the 1970s porn, in which <laughs> the I, milkman's I had the razor here. For you, Mrs. Cunningham. Actually, you knew it was trouble for the milkman when they started selling things like milk shampoo. Mm -hmm. That was when you knew they weren't making enough money in the milk trade. They had to branch out. Well, if you, Use if, it to if make you, more if, cheese if curds you want, for your poutine. If, if, if you want to see like one of the best music videos of all time, Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra dressed as milkmen as the as Tommy Dorsey and his all milkman orchestra backing. Uh, I can't forget her name, uh, but uh, in a night like a 1940s musical a number called Milkman. Keep those bottles quiet. Nancy Walker. <laughs> Rhoda, Rhoda Morgenstern's mom. <laughs> Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Uh, Can't get a shot with you. that great A riot. That it's is hysterical. Nancy Walker hysterical. plays like a, a girl who works on a war production assembly line who can't sleep because the milkman keeps clinking the bottles. And so it's just these people, these, these nicely dressed men in trombones and, and dressed as milkmen. Like wow. Know, there, there, there was a there was a kind of nuttiness that I'd like us to tap back into that we I, lost. we should bring that back. back. We should. Yes. It was from uh, the show Broadway Rhythm with uh, George Murphy, and you can get it. Uh, you can get it on uh, on D on the sheet music for eight dollars. <laughs> Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. All right, Apple is uh, is trademarking the words night shift for music or for technology. I've forgotten what kind of company they are now. <laughs> wasn't it a uh, wasn't that a uh, TV the show? TV. The night shift. Harry night and court? you're thinking about yeah. oh, night, night court. court. That's what I'm thinking. It was a no, movie. Night, night shift was a movie. The Fonz, Michael, right? Michael Keaton and Henry Henry Winkler. Yeah. Yes. Batman and the Fonz. Batman and the Fonz together at last. Show title. It was a morgue, right? They worked in a morgue. They, they were running. They were running. A, they were running a prostitution ring out of a morgue. What a uh, who pitched that idea? And, and it was what? the 70s, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the Fonz. And we got this this young kid named Keaton, and they're going to be running a prostitution ring out of a morgue. Hey. Well, they're up Turns out that this night. Keaton guy is not the guy from Bosom Buddies. That's okay. He's still very funny. He's still funny. <laughs> anyway, Night Shift, uh, which is that Apple thing that um, makes everything orange because it's nighttime. It or shifts you towards the warmer part of the spectrum at night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Apple apparently has filed a trademark uh, on it. A lot of stuff is perfunctory. I mean, anytime you come up with a branding name, your first job is You're to, try to protect market. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and they if, may or may not get it. You know, there's a period of uh, you know you, you comment. But if it catches on and you're the person who didn't file that trademark, boy, yes. you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And you got lawyers uh, on uh, on retainer to do stuff like that. Uh, Snapchat a little worried because <laughs> adults are now using it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're afraid it's going to... Your parents are on Snapchat, kids, and that's going to scare people uh, away. I feel victimized by this because Leo and I are both on Snapchat, and I feel like they're singling us out and trying to old shame us. us. Michelle Obama's on Snapchat. According to the Wall Street Journal, 14% of U.S. smartphone ages, uh, users aged 35 and above use Snapchat. That's up from 2% just three years ago. It's those lenses, Leo. If you can, like, if another app let you put love flowers those in your lenses. hair or burn your head off, I you'd be using it, but you can't. love... The Wall Street Journal's headline, Snapchat teen fans wince as app catches on with their folks. Look, I've got a dog face daughter. I've got a dog face daughter. Mom, put that away. <laughs> oh, it's so true, though. OMG, my mom. My mom. So what do they do? They go to the next thing, right? They, they're they not going to be where uh, 
where mom and dad are. Drive them back to Friendster. They might go back to actually writing letters and sending <laughs> sending photographs. With seals, with big wax micro. seals on them. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I had uh, a little sealing wax and a little uh, a little signet ring, signet ring with an L I in a it. Chinese, I had a Chinese one that you used to get when you got a Chinese name. And oh, yeah, you had the, yeah. Yeah, the block or whatever they called it. Yeah, yeah, those were awesome. Yeah. Uh, Apple patents a way to stop you from recording video at concerts. Who cares? I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a patent. Just a patent. The only, thing, the only thing that I care about with that is that, uh, you know, I, I, the control aspect of that is terrifying if, if it actually happened because it's not concerts that's the problem. It's, it's political uh, uprisings, uh, you know, all kinds of other things where the government could turn, it, turn up oh, on yeah. its own. Like that's, that's is it a jammer? What is it? Uh, it's the ability to give out a signal that basically the iPhone and the operating system would basically yeah. mm -hmm. decide. It's, 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 it's sort of like how like now if you try to scan a $20 bill, there is by law something in the code that says, oh, that's a $20 right. bill. I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, and so it's a, it's a similar sort of thing. There's There would be a custom light array that uh, does some sort of puts out an invisible light that would be detected by the camera sensor that would say, oh, I've got the I've got the a rich person doesn't want their picture taken light on. So therefore, I'm not going to let this poor person take their picture. Uh, but it's, it's just a patent and Apple patents like a, a kajillion things. And God only knows how they could possibly <laughs> sell this as a feature. Good news. You know how the times when you're really embarrassed when you post a picture from a concert, then later on, like uh, the Rolling Stones emailing and say, gosh, that, that was, we really looked bad that night. We wish you hadn't taken that. You know how embarrassed and you had to apologize. And all? We, we've solved the problem for you and that the, your camera that you own will not be able to take a picture under any circumstances that someone who has the money for this light array would not want that. Uh, like they, they patent a million things. A Please. lot of people are making too many, too many column inches about uh, too many think pieces about Apple run amok. Well, no, I think that I think that, that that it would be frightening if it got used in the wrong way. I think that from concerts, I would love to sit, you know, have people not be able to pick up their phone and take pictures because it's just annoying. I mean, it has nothing to do with them. The, the, the content right. It's just as a user, uh, as someone who wants to enjoy a concert, having like 80 phones taking bad pictures that they'll never look at again. Stop them texting really in movie theaters. That's what you need that light to do. Yeah. <laughs> Here is well, my, a... My Go ahead. But my, my idea is like when I when I win the Powerball lottery for a half a billion dollars, I'm gonna have a move. I'm gonna buy a movie theater. That's gonna be my losing business that I will just enjoy having. And the, <laughs> and one of one of the reasons why it's gonna be a huge success though is that it's gonna be Wednesday night is official. We don't care. Be animals. Text. <laughs> talk loudly. <laughs> there, because there are people who actually want to have a living room experience where they don't care. But then Thursday night there is. You have to, gentlemen must be in, everyone, men or, men or women must be in some form of what they consider to be formal attire, no no open-toed shoes, no, there'll be no talking, there'll be people like in, there'll be ushers in uniform facing the crowd, and if we see anything out of line, guess what, the special like $5 a year pass card that you must have to actually buy a ticket for Thursday night, we will revoke it and you will not be able to buy another ticket for Thursday night. I'll have one night for ant for people who enjoy being animals. I don't mean that as an insult. So again, it's fun to be whatever you want to be. Thursday night for people who want, I want quiet. And I want to be with people who are going to enjoy the movie and treat it with respect. That's how you change the world. It's the purge. A <laughs> Apple the has purge. Uh, teamed up with Weezer and uh, Trent Reznor to make an ambient soundtrack to celebrate the Juno mission that arrived in Wait. Jupiter. And I looked out and was reaching and just fascinated. Is that me? With what I saw. Making that noise? And Here, this is it. It's not it's not like that. It's very head Brussels sprouts. There you go. <laughs> this is, after a five year journey from Earth, NASA's unmanned solar powered Juno satellite inserts itself into orbit. Okay. Now if you sync up Dark Side of the Moon <laughs> to this frame. <laughs> Apple music. Presents visions of harmony. Is this an album? Can you buy this? <gasps> Hi, I'm Jeff Goldblum. I, I can this remember is the trailer for at a Day. pretty early age. We went on some trip far away, you know, into the mountains where there weren't many lights. And I went outside at night and I looked up. That's Scott Bolton. And I'd never principal seen principal investigator stars. of Juno. 
This is I, on I Apple's uh, Apple Music site. And I looked out and was reaching and just fascinated with what I saw and wondered how it worked. It's five-year mission Jupiter's so interesting is to that boldly go. Formed, Jupiter was the first planet. Where no probe and has so ever gone before. Go back and try to understand how the planets were made. I mean, where'd the stuff that made us come from? Jupiter kind of represents that first step. We can just remind people that it's not the one with the rings. We feel <laughs> as though our work has not been for nothing. But it is a gas giant. Am I wrong? In a larger sense, it's really trying to understand nature, and we're part of nature. I don't want to say. What is? Really I was I was told things in, in strict confidence. <laughs> nature. We have I don't want to lose ground. access to more NASA to press briefings. <laughs> I think that's not Jupiter, but I might be wrong. Whether it be for themselves or for others. I remember looking I think they're showing the us his wife's sonogram. <laughs> Here's Corinne Bailey Ray. She is a musician. Uniquely equipped to dramatize this amazing mission. Starts from trying to describe a certain emotion. Oh, Juno. Oh, Juno! Infinite space and how the planet. I mean, it's, about, you know, your own yeah. life and the life. It's pretty, but are we learning anything? That's a succulent. That is not. And we're not learning anything, but is it? That's a monkey. That's a baby. Oh my God! Monkeys on Saturn. Where is Spaceship Earth? Where is That's Spaceship Earth? Quinn, the I've musician. I've always been by looking at space, just understand that I'm a part of it. I'm a part of space. It, We're all a part of space. Making music was my own personal thing. It was like my diary. And there is a the rover. Innovation comes from not a Juno rover. Analytical and creative thought. Neither and one can really make progress rover. unless you've got both. Everybody's got to mix these. Worlds. Are they selling these rovers now? The Renaissance <laughs> in Florence. Galileo was this great scientist who certainly changed our culture forever. Well, I have he to leave Apple Music, music in order to make the purchase of that <laughs> rover so I don't <laughs> have to... 30%. I mean, you couldn't do Juno. You couldn't even think of the idea of going and doing a mission unless you had both halves of that. Okay. I'd say so many of the best musicians I know have both of those things, absolutely. They can trip out and be whimsical and romantic and lost. But they also Chance the rapper. are really technical and really nerdy and really clever and and organized and, uh, you know, music is repetition, you know, music is maths and there's so many patterns in music and if you were to explore the theory of music, you end up at pure maths. Anything can be put in equation form and it's just the universe. All right, I've had enough, I'm sorry. Yeah, we could, is this is, we stop here. The it life, goes the on for another. The life feed is so much better than that. I know. I don't understand it, really. I don't, it's, I don't know, there was, I, 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 I it's just, I don't know. <laughs> spent a lot of money. It's, it's, it's not. Spent it's not my money. jam. How much money do you think they spent on that? You're a video production expert, Alex Lindsay. I didn't see the whole thing, but a lot I, of money. That's a half million to million dollars. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's probably what it take to plan it and build it, and at least that's what we charge. It might be more. <laughs> <laughs> so, Apple, so you could have gotten a deal. Go to the Pixel yeah, Core next I, time. You know, the problem is, is that with with any of those things, it's hard to tell until you know what the, the the creative cycle was. But if you look at those, each one of those locations is a shoot, and it's a Steadicam operator and a jib, and you yeah, know, and yeah. uh, you lighting, know, all those things, yeah. and lighting, and people, and I mean, every one of those shoots is twenty five or thirty thousand dollars, and it's you know that kind of thing. So I mean, for the I'll, I'll, that's the interviews for the ones that are, that are bigger, it could be more than that. Alex, I got, I got 800 bucks. How much can we make fun of that video for that budget? <laughs> you, you could do a lot. You just play it and talk Seven's over it. It's kind of like you can do a Honey Badger version and, you know, I think it would just be we cut and paste that entire video and then we smash cut to like a kid, 11th grader in a science class giving his oral report and then the teacher just blankly saying, you didn't do any of the reading, did you, son? <laughs> well, I think no, it's interesting. You just, you just I, I think eight, it's, eight minutes about. Kind of <laughs> I think it's this attempt to take something that is not music based and then make it music based because it's in the music platform. You know, which is that's the part that's the the oddest part. I, I love the idea of producing really high quality videos about NASA. I, I pretty much can. I, I uh, would approve all of that. 
forever, you know, because it's my favorite thing. But but uh, but I think that uh, it's the forced piece of tying it together with music is a little more complicated. Spaceship it's Earth. Not, I'll, it's just not my jam. I'll just say. <laughs> Apple has released four new applications for people using iOS 10 beta with animated emojis, including this one. I can't wait to get classic Mac. Mm. That was in the that was in the developer seed. Uh, they've just made it an independent download now. But but you have to be using iOS 10 to use it. Yeah, so these are the, these are examples of the sticker packs. One of the things they announced is that as part of the iMessage apps, if you don't know how to code but you're an artist, you can make stickers and you can make them either in a painting application for static stickers or you can make them in Apple's Motion for uh, animated oh, stickers. And man. then you just drag them into Xcode and you basically upload them and they're available on the App Store. No coding needed. So I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, we're going to see amazing. I, I can't wait to see what like Icon Factory or Louis Mantia or Sebastian DeWitt or all these people or do. For me. Most of these are repurposed from the watch, right? These are the the animated. Yeah, they made the watch ones available for yeah. cross compatibility sake. But I've but I love the new classic Mac ones. I would love. I, mean, I don't know if the hello actually spells out hello, but these are animated, right? Have you played with them? No, th yeah, I think those so far have been s just static stickers. Static. Oh. But what's cool is that you can send one or you can drag one up and stick it on top of another of, of an existing bubble. And one of the really cool demos they did um, at WWDC is that messages can be collaborative. So a developer can say that each message is an individual, unique property unto itself, or they can say that they can share an ID. So then, for example, you can have stickers, and the demo they showed was an ice cream cone that then maybe me and Andy could take turns adding different oh, that's of cool. flavored ice cream to. Oh, that's cool. Or you and Alex can have a, uh, a, dinner res a dinner order thing going back and forth for the office, saying, I'm adding chicken to this, I'm adding steak to this, I'm adding pizza to this, and then in the and it's all bundled up and that's your order. So there's there's a really cool sort of collaborative uh, opportunity in there. Well, and I, and I have to admit that I thought all of this was completely silly until my kids started playing with it and they have gone <laughs> it's haywire. Fun. It's fun. Haywire. Yeah. The, the, the whole, because they have their little pen, so they're, they're drawing pictures and sending them to each other. And then that little thing that you kind of scribble and, it, and then it disappears and appears over on the other one. And, and um, I mean, they, I mean, it's just insane. So I, yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> one, one, of the, one, one, of the, one of the classic lessons of my years of, as a technology journalist is that just because I think something is silly, that yeah. doesn't mean I'm done thinking about this. It means you... <laughs> I was just watching the point. I cannot I, believe they use this much of the, of, the, of the keynote on these stupid little things that... I mean, and I enjoy so people my... Like, I, enjoy well, I can, I can it got the I, biggest I applause in the house because, for that announcement. Yeah. Because yeah. it shows again, some uh, it's it's natural for large companies and name any not just Apple, but name any large companies. You have to have a company like Snapchat that does willing to do in a, the most positive way, just heroically, gloriously stupid things, just for the just for no other reason than somebody at that company thinks it's a cool idea, and then it sh takes off like wildfire, and that points the way to Google and to Apple and to Facebook. To say, okay, we would not have come up with this our own self. We would not nor never necessarily have have devoted ten minutes of a keynote to stickers, but people love the stickers, and so we have to give them what they want. If people what are using. So one of the big aha moments we had earlier in the year is when the Kimoji app came out. And, you know, most of the existing people we had were like, oh, this is really dumb. We're just going to ignore it. And then, you know, uh, my boss, Kevin, credit to him, said, no, 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 this is amazing. Cover it. And it was incredibly popular. And we've since gone and hired Micah Sargent, formerly of Newsy, to just sort of do what we're calling I'm More Pop. Because there is a whole bunch of people for whom this is the most important stuff on the platform. And just because it's not stuff that we would traditionally think of as important, we, we're just wrong and, in, in, you know, not wrong, maybe, but we have our tastes. And, but there's millions, if not hundreds of millions of people with very different tastes. And it's our job to sort of serve all of them. And iMessage people, remains the most popular app on iOS. And when they just made three times the size emoji, Craig joked about that on the talk show, <laughs> that was the biggest pop of the night. Because yeah. people, people want to communicate. We're intrinsically lonely and we want to talk to other people. And if we can make that fun and we can de-stress it, stickers are less stressful than having to write to somebody because you can be late and you could say, oh, honey, I'm sorry, I'm late. And you'll get in trouble where you could send a banana peel slipping emoji and it'll be like, ha hurry up. Uh, right. And it's just and, all and these things does, are really valuable to us. And it does get a lot of a lot of fun. Someone sent me a picture of uh, of a picture of you know the fireworks and said Happy Fourth of July. And I found I have like Giphy I think or something. Yes. Yeah, a Giphy, keyboard. Yeah. And I and I posted I posted you know Leonardo DiCaprio you know with the little martini with the little stuff going behind <laughs> him and and it was a lot more fun than just saying Happy Fourth of July. I love him. July. I love him. Uh, George yeah, and I have Apple's late to the game on this. Game. Facebook Messenger's been doing it for a while. Telegram, a lot of a lot of other apps, but it's nice. Yeah, it's fun.
When you own the yeah. platform, you're only ever one announcement away from taking back market share. Yeah, that's right. That's true. <laughs> uh, new month means new videos of the Apple campus. It's coming along. Let's get uh, let's get up in the drone and uh, see <laughs> how the campus is coming. It needs Game of Thrones music, Leo. This month. It's really looking like it's own, you know, like a building. Yep. There's the R and D facility. And its own. It must uh, be terrible to be at the campus but not in that building. So close, right? Yeah. Because yeah, it's just are across you, the road. Yeah. Are you in the donut? Are you in the donut? <sighs> no, I'm across. Uh, yeah. It's like being in the office with the OEOB at the White House. You're like, yeah. I work at the White House. In the no. Look at that. The street. Hundred thousand square foot fitness center, just for employees. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jay Blonick is building it by hand. <laughs> it's a heck of a work. Entirely of Lego. <laughs> yes. It's the reason why you can't get a single gray Lego block. It's all being used for that structure. Uh, yeah, I wonder if he's like now making plans that I've got to find a way that at night to land some of these drones inside the building so that when they top it off and seal it <laughs> up, can I, can still make, a tour I can still make flights of the hallway to find out what's going on as they build out these offices. Solar panels on the parking structure, 95% complete. Lots of solar panels. Look at those. That's a these, are, these are really interesting buildings. They're you can open. turn the music down. I, I can do without that. 11,000... Vehicle yeah, parking, there. solar panels, 16 megawatts yeah. of power on a how sunny day. To, how, how close does that get to the, the entire use of the building, I guess, is the question. Yeah. I see. I, I think, listen, didn't they say their goal is to make it completely self-sufficient? Yeah. I don't know whether that meant they're going to be buying credits from elsewhere, but I think that one of the long-term goal was to make sure that Apple is, does Apple's putting more power into the grid than they're taking back from it. Fuel cells will be used as well for four, additional four megawatts. Ooh, just like that. That uh, Bond movie. <laughs> 3,000 glass panels will be used. Yeah. What do we say that those cost? They were some $150,000 each, something like that. They were, no, that can't be right. It's very but also, expensive. But also look at, look at those awnings. I, 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 I've, I was talking uh, casually to an architect about curved buildings like this. And he said that one, it, the, it's hard to build these things without really good modeling because the sun, if you get the, if you get the math wrong, the sun hits it at the wrong angle at the wrong time mm -hmm. of the year. Mm -hmm. And suddenly someone who is across the campus, that things are literally get, catching on fire because they put something paper in the window. We ta I talked to somebody who was actually on site in the, doing some uh, work there as a construction person who says they've been having horrific problems with uh, heat expansion, unplanned yeah. heat expansion issues. And, um, well, it's glass, so you have to yeah. do something without heat. Um, a lot of these buildings, again, from that same conversation, it's actually planned so that it can gather heat, but then put that heat to good use elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is a lot. A lot of it. It sounded like he was talking about designing a circuit board, where a lot of it was just managing what you're going to do with the heat that this thing is going to generate, and a lot of the stuff like <laughs> installing literally heat sinks throughout a building uh, is one of the one of the solutions to this. But there's, there's so, so many great questions you would like to ask. Uh, Apple secrecy internal is also very good. So what is there to make sure that people who are not supposed to know about certain projects don't cross talk? What or is don't this? Get to see things? What are we looking at here? Minecraft, Leo. That it looks like mine. So I guess this is foam. It's insulation. Yeah. Insulation foam covering the tunnel to, it, uh, to the underground parking facility. Yeah, so it says tunnels will be covered with dirt and foam. That's amazing. Yeah, so there's a if there's a lot of natural cooling that's happening there. If you keep that coolness inside and prevent heat from the from the sun from getting down there, you save a lot of money. A lot a lot of the power is not just power generation, but saving power by thinking of this as a hermetically sealed unit, almost like a biodome. That this is going to this is a functioning organ right. the organism that's going to be breathing in and breathing out. Uh, and it's going to sweat and it's going to uh, be generating heat and need to cool down. And how do you actually move all that energy and not waste it? So that is uh, that is uh, from Matthew Roberts. There's another, there's, I guess, two guys now. There's. I'm surprised there's not kind of like a, uh, like some sort of traffic <laughs> jam of drones over yeah, the no, Apple. I'm, I'm, surpri I'm surprised that one of these <laughs> one of these videos doesn't end with like suddenly this expanding net appears from a dot <laughs> somewhere from a van. <laughs> or Ed 209. Just as Ed 209 comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, at this point, we're talking uh, early next year. Although I'm still wondering if they 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 hurried along on the 
theater. Uh, and I'm still wondering if maybe we won't see the first Apple event in the theater this year. I wouldn't, I don't know. It still looks pretty messy. It's possible to, it's, it's possible to have it, uh, they, they have to get an occupancy permit. If they're going to be putting more than X number of people inside a structure, they can't just simply decide that, okay, we think this is okay. They have to have people sign off on that. Yeah. However, it's possible to get sort of a, I, I'm about to talk above my, above my level of understanding, but it would be possible for them to get, get it up to a certain standard that allows them to host and get a permit for a one-time event inside there. The question is, would they want to bring people into a building that is unfinished? Uh, so, but I, I do believe that they're really accelerating the research lab and the, uh, and the auditorium, uh, because there's, 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 there's a lot of early bang that's going to be generated right. from both those places. Well, I'm sure all of you will get invited to the first event there and it'll be a very exciting thing. And it'll be just me on the outside, pressing my nose to that curved glass going, <laughs> Oh, wow. I wish I could get in. You guys I wonder. I wonder where that. The, where where does on the pay grade of Apple employees the the the, the, the squeegee team? You got, like a <laughs> Leo's nose prints again, yeah. again with the nose. You think prints. about that. It's gonna be there's gonna be a there's gonna be a squeegee team of like ten people, and that's all they do all mm. day. Yeah, it's like the Golden Gate Bridge, they right? They just keep going in circles. This second, but yeah, because it's, it's all like connected like and like curved, you could just hold the squeegee yep. out and be on like some sort of pulley and just go zzz all the way around. Easy. There will also be like uh, two times weekly passive aggressive memos from maintenance saying we have explained to all of you hires that suction cup darts are not to be used inside office buildings. It's fun to you, but we have to have people out there removing the darts when you are done with your playtime. It does. It is. I remember the 10th anniversary of the iPhone announcement is January, right? Yep. And the yeah. release is June, so yeah. it is kind of uh, it would be a momentous occasion to kind of have at the iPhone 10. Also, yeah. also, a lot of stuff is going to be finished finished there in early 2017. Right. Uh, so, I, 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 I've I've no idea, but uh, I would I would be really surprised if they didn't take advantage of that and saying we are having a huge 10th anniversary right. blowout. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all the all all the hummus and and, and grass water that you can drink. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a break and get your picks, gentlemen, in just a moment. Our show today brought to you by the Ring Video Doorbell. I really shouldn't even just say the Ring Video Doorbell now because they have a number of products in the Ring uh, family giving you, in fact, the Ring of Security bundle or the Pro bundle. We've talked before about the Ring Video Doorbell. I love our Ring Video Doorbell. I know when people come and go, I can say to my dog, I don't have to do this anymore, but I could have said to my daughter, I see you came home late, and who was that you brought with you at 3 in the morning? Because I have video of, of it's got motion detector in it, it's high-def video. Uh, when the doorbell rings, I can answer it, not even from home, but from here, from anywhere around the world because of the Internet. They've got apps for the uh, iPhone and Android devices, and they have a Mac app too now, which is really nice. So you could actually get on your Mac and see all the motion that's been going on with your Ring Video Doorbell. Now they have the Ring Video Doorbell Pro, 1080p HD video, night vision, and because it uh, is hard, it's designed for hardwired doorbell replacement, they don't use uh, a battery on this, so it's a lot smaller. That's nice. That's the Ring Video Doorbell Pro. The kit, the Ring of Security kit, comes with the wireless weatherproof HD stick-up cam, so you've got your doorbell looking at the front door, but maybe you got the stick-up cam around back. You can also hear and speak to visitors with two-way talk using that. And with the optional cloud video recording, you can easily capture and share video with family and friends or, you know, law enforcement should, <laughs> should the need arise. Then they get, with the kit, you get the chime, which plugs in under any standard power outlet to know when your doorbell is ringing. We, I, I never hear my regular chime, so having a second chime... Uh, and around back is very handy. The Ring of Security bundle or the Pro bundle, $50 off. Just go to ringring.com slash MacBreak. There are the kits. Ring.com slash MacBreak, $50 off just because you're listening. Monitoring of your whole home now, thanks to Ring. They've really got a great family of products. I love our Ring video doorbell. I, I really, I, I couldn't live without it now. And, uh, and I think with these new products, they've really got a great offering. Ring.com slash MacBreak to save $50 off your new Ring kit. 
Time, ladies and gentlemen, for our picks of the week. Alex Lindsay, I always end with you this time. Let's start with you. So I have a I have a uh, an odd one. Uh, it, it was actually based on watching my my wife actually use uh, she. My wife loves calligraphy, and uh, you know, she got her the big iPad and and uh, she really wanted to put something on it that did calligraphy. And this calligraphy handbook she just loves, and so I thought I'd make it the pick for the week. Um, it is a uh, you can get it on you know for the iPad, and basically what it does is it really gives you a way to you know it works really well with the pen or pencil. And, um, you know, it gives you uh, oh, that's a, a, really, a real guide on exactly how to, you know, write these um, and, and, and a lot of instruction on how to put it together. And there's a couple of products all made by the, this one fellow who, looking by the name, um, my guess is, is that he's from uh, Vietnam. Nguyen um, Tan Hon Hu. Yeah, um, but the uh, but I think that um, he's got a couple different ones on on this, but this is the one that she's spending most of her time on, um, and uh, and she just really enjoyed it. I mean, she just spent. My my wife has not been a big uh, fan of um, or a big convert to the iPad until until she started really playing with this in a pencil. So um, there's a lot of tools there that really you know let you kind of play with that and oh, um, you know kind of learn how to you know how to do that and and work with angles and. And so on and so forth. Anyway, what a good so idea think, for the use of the pencil and the pro. That's really cool. And I think, yeah, I think that more than anything else, I, I think that these are the kind of apps you just really get sometimes when you look at an app like, wow, people could learn. You can really learn how to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the, that is on the cool. iPad. So when it's well, when it's well, well, well built, you know. So um, anyway, it's pretty, pretty nifty. Very cool. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So I had the good fortune of going to the accessibility meetup at WWDC, and one of the developers I met there makes the ASL app, the American Sign Language app mm. for the iPhone. Now, it's not an app meant to teach people who need sign language, sign language. It's an app meant to teach other people um, sign language. It's like an introduction, and it has like basic vocabulary, but it's, it's really meant for people who have hearing but are curious or interested or just want to learn more about American Sign Language to sort of get that, that introduction and learn that basic vocabulary and sort of open up that world so they can they can better understand it. Um, I downloaded it. I'd show it to you, but my I'm busy updating my phone and it's taking forever. But it, <laughs> it, like you, you can you can download it uh, and you can get started with it. Uh, it's it's really approachable. They've really taken great pains to make it. You know, forgive me for saying this, but accessible to people who don't need it for accessibility. If that makes any sense. Uh, but it's. I've always been fascinated about this. I've always looked at people who are doing sign language and, and you go to conferences sometimes and they have somebody who's doing sign language on the side. You know, it, that was especially um, prevalent before you could do real-time subtitles. And it's still, it's still used a lot with live speakers at, at venues. Uh, and it's just, it's incredibly fascinating. And this, it, it just, it gives you an appreciation for it, but it also gives you a little bit of understanding of it. And I think it's, it's something that all of us could use more of. What a great idea. Yeah, it's tremendous. Oh, I love this. I've always wanted to learn ASL. Same. And there's a lot of evidence, by the way, that kids who learn ASL, hearing or not, um, their brain develops in a unique way. It's a language, yeah. uh, and it uh, it's very valuable. Wow, that's the same really way good. learning to code. It opens you up to many, yeah. many new yeah. ways of thinking, which is amazing. The other cool thing about ASL is that it's the one truly international language. Yeah. And it's a true language. It's not um, right. Exactly. It's, it's not, not letter spelling. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a full expressive language of its own. Wow, this is really cool. Thank you. Really cool. Yeah. I got. I got two apps. I got to download. <laughs> Andy, what can you do for me? I can give you a free app to download. Okay. Um, <laughs> just today, this is fresh off the wire. Uh, BB Edit eleven point six just got released uh, with piles and piles of features that you would have to be a professional developer to truly understand and explain. Love uh, BB it, Edit. We, you've heard us talk about BB Edit over and over again. It's just if for even if you're not a coder, if you're just a writer, or if you just need to bash text, it is the consummate tool for editing uh, editing text. Um, one of the highlights, though, for people like me is that they've decided that for a long time uh, bare bones has had a free product called text wrangler which is sort of a simplified text editor and then the commercial uh, bb edit what they've done they've made a, a substantial change where now uh, if you download bb edit 11.6 you will get the full version of bb edit it'll be fully operational for 30 days after 30 days it will still function but some of the like totally diesel heavy duty apps uh, excuse me heavy duty features uh, that would be like uh, for for web development and stuff like that 
they're grayed out and said you know this is a demo feature uh and if you and, you, and the that app that version of the app will keep running forever keep opening all your files forever it's not like limited in uh, opening saving and editing files but if at any point you decide you want to pay 40 bucks uh, for a uh, for a license, if you were never using that uh, app before, then that that same copy will just then be unlocked, and all those things that were gray are gonna uh, gonna be light, lit up again. Uh, and there's less less money for if you're if you're a previous customer of uh, BB Edit 11, the upgrade is free. If you have uh, and the upgrades can be less expensive depending on what version you have. Uh, but that's a really neat way of uh, not necessarily making something demo where, but saying if we're not gonna make our app stop working after 30 days we're just going to take away the features for which we most have, we, we we deserve money for all of this but here are the features that you can use to make lots of money with this app and we're just going to hope that you're going to give us we're going to agree that these extra features are worth money that's really great uh so are they discontinuing text wrangler or is just if you download the demo you can use this forever text wrangler is still available you can still download it off of the site uh, it is natural to wonder what the future of Text yeah. Wrangler will be, but I can say that uh, the BB Edit 11.6 is live. I just went to the site and I was just able to download Text Wrangler as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been using the betas uh, and I don't, uh, again, if, if, you have the, if you have the demo version of BB Edit, I think you'll be happy with that and you don't necessarily need Text Wrangler. He used to, Rich Siegel, who's been on the show, used to do it that way, I seem to remember. And then he introduced Text Wrangler. He's gone back and forth on the idea of a free editor. Yeah, well, that, that's what happens when you have a small company that's run by just two or three people. You can have a lot of, instead of something being the result of six months of meetings, then three right. months of consultants right. doing doing A-B testing, it's more like people leaning back <laughs> over whiskey and thinking, does it, what, 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 would, what would we like to do? What makes sense for us? How, will, how do we achieve outreach to, to new customers in the best way? And so they will try this, and if it doesn't work out, they'll try something else. Uh, but uh, they, it's always done with a, uh, a lot of thought and a lot of belief. These, these are the people who birthed this app and have been raising it and, and cultivating it uh, for years and years and years. So it's not, not, not an app that gets bought by, uh, by, by Morton Thiokol and then it becomes something else entirely. <laughs> no, and I don't think it ever will. And I like that. I think this is Rich's, uh, this is his life journey. And, uh, use it every day. It's amazing. Yeah, really amazing. Yep. Amazing product. It's actually, for some people, a reason to get a Mac. It's that good. It's it's an example of just... It, it's, it's rare that, you, in my opinion, he, he, is, he is a very close friend, so I have to, I have to say that. But to realize that he became a friend... After I was on the Mailsmith, another a, 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 a late uh, BB Edit uh, bare bones product, I was on the the, B, the 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 alpha and the beta list for that, and we became friends after me complaining about Mailsmith and saying it should work this way, not that way. That we wound up going out for lunch and uh, a friendship. So uh, you endured. killed Mailsmith, you son of a. <laughs> I didn't kill Mailsmith. I just simply said, Mailsmith, walk towards the light. All are welcome. I don't uh, know why. I, You know, Apple ships a very credible email program uh, with OS X, and there probably isn't really a reason for anything else. But I nevertheless continue to download and try and look for a better email program. That's good. And I loved Mailsmith. I thought it was very good. Um, I currently use Mailmate. Um, which is a kind of a old-fashioned feeling power tool. Does it work like Eudora? If it doesn't work like Eudora, Leo, we if, can't use it. You know, I was going to say, if you're you, if you miss Eudora, you will feel facts? right at home with Mailmate. And <laughs> Thunderbird, all you have, Thunderbird or Bust. All you have to do is look at the Mailmate website to realize, oh yeah. <laughs> but it ha what it does is it handles uh, IMAP really well, and I, you know that's kind of key to me. And yeah. the other key that it absolutely has to have, uh, which Apple's Mail does is uh, support for uh, PGP, uh, uh, you know, email encryption, or I, I use uh, GNU Privacy Guard, uh, and, uh, and most Mac people do. Um, and it does support it quite well. It's a, it's a really nice uh, email client. I have to say that I've been liking the direction that Mail.app has been taking. Mail's good, um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think it ever stank, but it looked like, for a couple of years, it looked like an unloved, piece of software like the person who the, the, the people at apple who really wanted it to excel had moved on to other things or moved on to other companies and it was sort of looking for a new sponsor so to speak but every new iteration that's come out has had a, a nice little tweak and a nice, nice little bit of simplicity uh, it's a lot more stable than it used to be it works with uh, gmail now which was really the reason i started 
looking at other email programs. Yeah, yeah and that's smart people that, in mail now. Right. And that and that in itself is laudable because every I mean, the the, the fact that you, you yourself can mention that IMAP support is done well on a certain app. Right. IMAP is so crazy with all the different dialects that every every person who creates a, a, a new mail system based on IMAP decides that, you know what, but I'm going to be the one who finally fixes IMAP for good. And it's going to be standard IMAP. It'll just be IMAP will just be better, except for the mail apps that break when they try to interface with this and the people who can't log in. Uh, and so the fact that they got it working reliably with the Gmail, which is its own quirk with a capital K. It's not uh, a really standard e IMAP. That's why, you know. It's, yeah, exactly. It's and that, that, so that's, that's, that shows the amount of work that goes into yeah. it. I think that I'm, yeah. I'm very, very, I'm actually kind of keen to see what happens to it in the next two or three years because they, they also seem to be learning a lot from, uh, from the iPad. Uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of things in uh, the new version of Mac OS where you can really see that they looked at there, there are a lot of people at Apple who are now using iPads, I think, as their primary computing device. And after time, they, when they're forced to go back <laughs> to their office and their key and their and their 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 cubbies and use their Macs, like, gee, I really wish I could do picture in picture like I can on my iPad or I really wish that mail worked the way that it could on my iPad. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff that I really like. And as long as I'm mentioning GPG, uh, the GPG tools for Macintosh just came out with its first stable release for El Capitan, just in time for Sierra. Uh, it takes them a little while, but you know what? It's free, and it's a great tool. And if you uh, do want to have encrypted email, uh, this, is, this is the standard way to do it. Um, they have voiceover support now, which is nice. Um, uh, download the uh, GPG suite from gpgtools.org. And uh, it came out yesterday, on the 4th of July, because it, it's all about freedom. <laughs> so there. And apple pie. And apple pie. Ladies and gentlemen, we've concluded another great episode of Mac Break Weekly. And I thank you all for being here. Alex Lindsay, the Pixel Core. Follow him on the Twitter at Alex Lindsay with an A. A-S-A-Y. What did Alex Lind say? That's how I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you for being here. To Lind, and then I'll just say a lot of things. Yeah. Anything you want to uh, plug? You got coming up, or um, yeah, there's nothing that I'm doing that I can plug. That's a plug in and of itself, isn't it? In a way, that's the most impressive plug at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I'd I'm, plug I'm, it, but I can't. I'll be off for a couple weeks, uh, working on some stuff. So okay, um, good. Anyway, but okay, well, we'll uh, see in a few weeks. That's good. He'll be on Jupiter. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, can't talk about that. Yeah. Hey, somebody's got to do the stream. Yeah. <laughs> From Montreal, as always, at imore.com. It's the great Rene Ritchie. Love having you on the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, anything you want to plug? Yeah, it should be out either tomorrow or the next day, but we had a really good interview with Linda Dong, who worked on the Apple Pencil and, uh, Leo Napolitano, who worked on Siri for CarPlay and Apple TV on Debug. So that'll be in the next episode. Great. Yeah, they're both brilliant, brilliant people. Great. Debug is the one of the many podcasts from the iMore gang, uh, but a must listen, always. Uh, if you go to iMore.com and, and go to the uh, the hamburger menu and click podcasts, <laughs> you'll, find it. Yeah. you'll find it. It's right there with the hamburgers. Andy Anako writes for the Chicago Sun-Times and uh, joins us right. every week. He also does Anako's Almanac and uh, Material, other podcasts on other networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, anything you want to plug, sir? Uh, nothing, nothing particular. Unfortunately, okay. I'm the opposite of Alex. And I can talk about everything, but nothing I'm doing is <laughs> this week is particularly interesting. <laughs> Great. <laughs> He's only on Mars, and since Jupiter is in hotness, I'll only, he doesn't. I'll, I'll, I will only say that I bought this really cool, like electric switcher on a typewriter. Wow. That. That's about the spec awesome. you could kill a man. I can. I'm about to kill myself if I drop this on. What do you do with that pad over Bluetooth? <laughs> uh, I have a. I have a specific project that I'm working that I've I've bought this for, but I have to take it to the world famous Cambridge typewriter in Arlington, Massachusetts. Uh, and have it looked at because there are a couple of things that are kind of wrong with it. Uh, but isn't that yeah, nice I, that you still have a typewriter store repair shop in 
Oh, these guys, these that 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 shop is legendary. It's wow. become it's not just like one of the few places that repairs typewriters, but the this this shop just repairs everything. And he has a really great they have a great typewriter blog that of course is uh written on typewriters that have been brought into the shop <laughs> and he'll show and he'll just like every time there's like an interesting typewriter comes in for repair, he'll like write about it and uh, he was he's taking stuff that's been like dragged from the bottom of a lake and used in a in a in a in a, in a, in a crime investigation. <laughs> Investigation and got it working back into pristine, beautiful condition. <sighs> Look at this. So I'm looking for. He, he, wow. He's repaired one. He's repaired one of my typewriters before, uh, and this is this is because this is going to be like an actual production piece of hardware for again a project that uh, I can't talk about yet. But, but hey, I do have something I can't talk about. All right, yay! yay. Uh, you found it. But yeah, this you know, this one actually yeah, this one this one has to actually work and has to be able to keep up with my typing. So I'm. Also, the cord is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of blazy, kind of fire-y, kind of yeah, insurance. Yeah, -like I saw the plug uh, connectors in the back that looked like somebody had, had puttied them in. I don't know. I think it's a little worrisome. Look at that yeah. Russian keyboard. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, and it, he, he repairs all of them. As a matter of fact, I bought this model on his advice. I, I, have, wow. a, I have a relationship with, <laughs> I have a guy, I know a guy <laughs> for, wow. buying, for, for typewriters. And like this is the uh, uh, Smith Corona Electra 210. These things that are again, they are just made like <laughs> they're made out of steel and 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 iron hearts. So they're <laughs> there's nothing you can't fix with this. I kind of I have fond memory of my last typewriter, um, which was a very fancy typewriter. It was like oh, I wish I could remember. It wasn't electric. My last manual typewriter, but I remember it was like this is like the the king of typewriters. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like, again, I have a manual typewriter that I bought at a flea market because it's like actually like a 1942, like Smith Corona, like super portable. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it's for me actually writing on it, it's a little bit twee. It's like I have to focus yeah. on slowing down whereas on this keyboard i had this is actually i used to type when i was a little kid before our, our family got an apple computer this model typewriter is the one that i wrote like my first published story on oh that's neat no wonder so, so it, it has a little special up with me yeah mine was a was an hermes uh hermes uh can't remember what model it was but these were considered to be the like the king of the you know if yeah you, if you could get a great, great typewriter i wish i yeah right it was not the same Hermes. These are, her, these are Hermes. Um, but I, uh, I, I wish I could. Uh, I wonder what happened to that. God, I'd love to have that again. I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure my guy could set you up with one of those things. Really? Once, once or twice a year, the shop has, I think they call them type ins, in which it's an open house and they just set up like dozens and dozens of typewriters like on the sidewalk and everywhere, inviting people to have cake and punch and type. And they're, type, they're typing speed contests. And it's, it's, it's quite a festival, man. Wow. Ta -ta. I think we, we, we played with ones when I was a kid, but I think my first reports were still, uh, they went from handwritten to my teacher. Remember, I remember my teacher asking, what typewriter did you use this for? And I was like, <laughs> it's called a dot matrix printer. Oh, no, <laughs> no yeah. I, I, I went through college with a typewriter, with a manual typewriter. Well, I, yeah. I, I, with, 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 that's the end of the show. We need to go. But uh, I, I, uh, my, uh, a, my a teacher thought that I was making an excuse for not finishing my uh, my essay assignment when I came up to him in class and said I'm sorry I just uh, I, I it's finished but my printer at home is broken I have it on this floppy I can print it for you when I get to the computer lab like this afternoon and he said and Mr. Anatko, why don't I just, I have an Apple computer at home. Why don't I just take that disc and see what's on it? <laughs> and, <laughs> Not my Whoa. And, Whoa. Then, and, the next, and the next day he was like, so, he was like, very, very pleased with me for actually not having lied about my homework, but also say, you know, that I was so excited. It's the first time I've actually accepted an assignment on a floppy disk. Oh, I wrote a so piece great. for the Boston Globe about it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. You know, you can get uh, vintage Hermes. The problem is we don't have Cambridge typewriter out here. You can road get trip. Next, next time. Next next time you come to New England, let's do a road trip. I might. Also that, that that's near. That's near. Uh, it's uh, it's on the red line. It's like near uh, Somerville. Uh, there's there's a good barbecue near there. There's stuff to do. And sounds I think good. You, I might I just come out. Enjoy it. I think you would even like if you had a video recorder, you would record something with this person because it's. Uh, uh, it, it sounds it's, wonderful. Yeah, it is. I have to go see my mom at some point. It might be a short road trip, but that's close enough that uh, I'll stop. I'll be in Cranston. I'll come on over. We'll go to Cambridge Typewriter. 
might even pick up an Hermes. You can even you can even come to my favorite diner with me. Oh, Sold. deal sold. <sighs> They're only about 150 bucks. It's kind of sad yeah. on uh, eBay. I, I will say if, if anybody if anybody is tempted after hearing this to go on eBay, I should tell you that there are two things that are guaranteed when you buy a typewriter like this on eBay. They'll be super super cheap. And that's good, but they're guaranteed to get broken during shipping. Right. I don't. I don't mean that they'll be like in pieces. I mean that it'll be perfectly functional when the person packs it up very nicely. When you get it, mm -hmm. a key will not work mm -hmm. or a plate will not work. So that's why I would not have bought one on eBay had I not had a guy. No, Cambridge gonna, typewriter. Yep, yep. That's why I'm not buying one. They're Swiss, you know. And do you, where do you get? Can you get uh, the ribbons? Yep, ribbons are easy to get. These are standard ribbons. Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, somebody uh, still makes typewriter ribbons. Oh yeah, well, it's easy. It's just like cloth impregnated with with soaked in soaked well, in. No, I understand the technology, but why bother? <laughs> because because it's it's like there are people who still use these. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's it's no longer something that you can sell in bulk to to every single corner drugstore. But they are things that if you manu if you keep manufacturing them and put them on Amazon, you know, people are are going to seek you out because sure. where else are they going to go for them? You know, what's, uh, what's sad is that, uh, you know, if I got one of these, m in my memory, it's pristine, it's brand new, it's wonderful, <laughs> yeah. and then you get it and you realize, good God, that was, f you know, 50 years ago, <laughs> and these things are beat up now. <sighs> Again, right. talk to my guy. <laughs> he, 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 and and he, also, he also, like, acquires typewriters for sale because now it's very, very hip, like, for weddings to, like, buy a typewriter oh, to type invitations on. Type invitations. People buy them for their kids for Christmas. So he can probably, well, if, when, when you're there, you'll be able, he will be able to show you a what looks like a brand new, completely reconditioned model that you will then wow. carry home lovingly as, as you're carrying. Well, and you still can't address envelopes worth a damn on a computer. Also, well, also uh, the 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 thing that I actually use like my manual typewriter for is that there are times where I want to write a letter like I when I read a letter to my congressman when I wrote a letter of complaint <laughs> to someone else it's like nothing says that nothing no, says crank person, quite like no no, no I, okay maybe that too well, it's, it's, it's the content that says crank I like to think. But it's like, okay, this was definitely not printed up. This is not something, a, a PDF that someone downloaded, and now that I'm the thousandth person to... Yeah, no, to, that's to true. You, you, you hand-entered it. It gets your attention. To your typewriting machine. Also, people think that I'm 83 years old and I have nothing to do <laughs> all day. That's why I write letters to people. Uh, thing says crank quite like a typewritten letter. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. That sparrow head <laughs> Wearing a firefighter hat. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you can't join us uh, live on the stream and join us in the chat room uh, or be in studio, we love it when you're in studio. I got some nice members of our studio audience today, all of whom look old enough to remember typewriters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do that, well, just to get your on-demand audio or video, you can download that using your computing machine uh, from twit.tv slash mbw or wherever finer podcasts are aggregated for distribution via the Internet. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time. Another, uh, oh, no, I, that's not how I say it. I say uh, break time is over. Now get back to work. Break time is over. Over. It's break. It's over. It's over. It's over.